One night at a bar called Marlsaral, a warrior named Kaio came and then sat down near the bartender after putting down his sword. The bartender asked about Kaio's catch that day. Kaio answered that he only managed to conquer the secret realm level 2. He also only got the skin and fangs of the wolf monster there. Kaio's attention shifted to the big screen, where there is a live broadcast of a court. In that court, the selection process was finally completed. The moderator read out all the voting results and all members of the Congress consisting of 325 people supported it. Parliament President He Yao begins the trial of the case involving the mask. He Yao started by presenting the evidence. The mask is said to have committed many massacres during the war. He even shot 30,000 people to purge the upper echelons of their commonwealth. At the same time, they also attacked colleagues from other countries which resulted in damaged trade relations between the two countries and caused a lack of food supplies in the northern region of the commonwealth. Therefore, He Yao wanted the death penalty for the mask. However, He Yao also said that the mask had been instrumental in expelling foreign invaders. Therefore the death sentence was suspended. The punishment will be replaced by removing the mask's position as Supreme Leader of the Commonwealth and Supreme Marshal of the Commonwealth. Meanwhile, Parliament will maintain the mask's special hero title so that when something happens, the mask can return to the battlefield as soon as possible to help the Commonwealth. Back at the bar, everyone who saw the proceedings started commenting. Some regret this punishment because if it weren't for the mask who had been fighting alone against foreign enemies and monsters and also helped people in natural disasters, then the human race would have been extinct by now. This opinion was of course opposed by other men. For him, the mask does not fight alone. Many helped him, including Hiao. Another man agreed and said that men like the mask should be removed. The debate continues. Supporters of the mask say that natural disasters at that time made it difficult for everyone. Even heroes who had extraordinary powers also gave up. Only the mask keeps fighting and ultimately saves everyone. But it turns out that the human race easily forgets everything. They are too confident because they feel they can overcome mutants and even create a commonwealth. The other man dodged it. For him, the mask is still trapped in the past. The mask still believes in the existence of mutants and believes that humans are not ready to be independent and independent. The mask even believes that several heroes have been secretly corrupted by a mysterious force and insists on pushing humans back to those terrible times. The man thinks the mask is just missing its past glory days, a time when he had all the power and everyone bowed to him. Back in court where the decision has been made, He Yao invited the mask to go as a special hero. He assured that everyone would not forget the mask's service in fighting mutants. He Yao also assured that the punishment the mask received was very light and even contrary to what the law should be. The mask suddenly opened his eyes and was confused. The mask remembers the last time he should have died while fighting the Lord of the Weaving Knight who attacked him secretly. However, he was back at the parliament building on the day he was betrayed by his colleagues. The mask thought it was a flashback of his life. But then the system appeared before him. The system gave a new task to rebuild the life of the human race. There are two paths to do this, namely the hero path and the monster path. The mask has 20 minutes to decide and then he will be sent to realm level F. The mask does not think he will be born again and once again must be faced with a choice that will determine history. Different from before, this time the mask chose the monster route. He Yao, who had been waiting, finally asked the mask. He thought the mask was silent because he was not satisfied with the decision that had been given by parliament. In his heart, He Yao realized that the mask's existence as a hero was completely unmatched. It's just that as a chairman, the mask is considered to have no emotions or political wisdom. The existence of the mask is considered to hinder other people who have better potential. Everything that happened to the mask was the commonwealth's way of lowering its dignity in the eyes of society. They deliberately used several cunning methods to make the mask, who was once considered a hero leading change in humanity, is now considered an old-fashioned old man who cannot move forward from the past. Parliament deliberately removed the mask, which it felt was only a stumbling block preventing humans from achieving a better future. They want to isolate the mask from everything. Therefore, if the mask still doesn't agree, then humans will think of him as a stubborn man who doesn't want to give up power. Sure enough, because the mask suddenly expressed his objection. He Yao saw that as an advantage. Back at the bar where everyone is still observing the proceedings, a man immediately responded to the mask's objection, assuming the man didn't want to give up his power. He thinks the mask did it on purpose so that humans couldn't move forward. However, it turns out that the mask's objection was not about losing his position, but rather that he wanted to give up the special hero position he had. A decision that immediately shocked everyone including He Yao. The mask emphasized once again that he wanted to give up his title as a special hero because he was tired. He Yao thought that the decision was the mask's way of showing dissatisfaction with the parliament's decision. But the mask immediately dodged it. He felt he was in a much more relaxed condition than before. He Yao was of course annoyed. He did not expect that the mask, who usually prioritizes the safety of humanity, would now choose to give up his special hero title. 
Even though the mask should comply with the rules and decisions made by Parliament, He Yao thinks the mask is deliberately using his power to rebel against the Commonwealth. He Yao called the mask and said that he couldn't just leave. The mask casually asked if there was anything else He Yao wanted to talk about. He Yao ordered the mask to give up his power because the man had also given up his position as a special hero. At the bar, everyone asked questions again. They didn't understand what He Yao meant. Another man replied that He Yao's intentions and goals were very clear, that he wanted to destroy the mask's power. Of course, other men wondered whether power could also be destroyed just like that. A woman asked about the mask's level and another man answered that the mask was level 13. Kaio said that the mask's level was even four levels above He Yao's level, which was the second highest among the heroes. Only the mask can touch realms above level 10. Even in the future, it will be difficult to find someone like the mask. Back in the parliament room He Yao adds that all of the mask's power comes from the resources provided by the commonwealth. Everyone has worked hard and even sacrificed themselves to create these resources. Therefore, He Yu couldn't just let the mask get away with everyone's hearts and souls which would mean humiliating everyone in the commonwealth. He Yu emphasized that the mask must surrender all his power before leaving. The mask seemed to be considering He Yu's words. The mask then agrees to give up his powers. The mask raised his hand, creates a huge ball of power in the air. That power made everyone in the room in pain because they couldn't bear it. Even He Yu, who was a rank 9 hero, cursed because he was annoyed that he had to use all his strength to resist the strong urge not to kneel before the mask. After that, the mask very casually returned his powers according to Parliament's request. The power was so great that it even penetrated out of the building and into the sky. Everyone could even see the light and thought it was a sign of the arrival of a king-class monster. After the return process was complete, he was relieved. Even though he had to be tortured for 10 minutes, the mask no longer has any strength. The mask is now just an ordinary human and he you no longer need to be afraid of him. In his heart he you just wanted the mask to go away. The mask stepped out and then threw away the mask he had been wearing. He watched him leave happily because he was sure the mask would die as soon as he came out. But suddenly, the mask just disappeared. The mask teleports. He went to realm level 4 which was the nest of spider monsters, leaving Hiyu stunned in place. The realm door opened and a group of hunters appeared. They were in a level 3 secret realm with general enemies being level 1 and 2 demons, while the boss in the realm was a level 3 spider monster which would be relatively easy for those whose members were all at level 2. The only problem was the monsters. It had a large, almost human-like body, so the captain checked to see if any of his team members were afraid. They joke around with each other and a girl asks Yan Kayan not to be afraid. But Yan Kayan didn't want to be underestimated. Another man urged the captain to start moving. He said he was short of money and had to quickly kill monsters to get money. The archer also agreed. But he remembered because that day was the day of the mask's trial and he missed it. He regretted not being able to see the live broadcast. Another man told the archer to go home and watch the replay which would be the same. A girl said that if it weren't for the trial being broadcast live, they definitely wouldn't have been able to find the secret realm. The archer immediately agreed. The captain immediately intervened and invited them all to leave. The captain encouraged the team members to work together and work quickly to loot the entire contents of the secret realm. Everyone of course agreed enthusiastically. After only walking a few steps, they were surprised again by the arrival of a man. The man attracted everyone's attention because he dared to come to the secret realm without bringing any equipment or weapons. The strange man is the mask. As soon as he entered the secret realm, he was a little confused because he had forgotten the conditions of such a lower level secret realm. The mask is nostalgic. He remembers the last time coming when he was resurrected as a professional. The mask enters the secret realm and must complete it within a certain time so that the secret realm does not turn into an eternal secret realm. The immortal secret realm was a place like hell for humans and was even feared by monsters. His main enemy was a demon king who couldn't even be named. Not long after, the mask looked at his status in the system again. After losing all his strength and now returning to level 1, the system sent him to the secret realm randomly. The mask doesn't yet know what will happen after he chooses the monster path. It's just that in his previous life, the mask has proven that the hero's path cannot save humanity. Now he is waiting for the cold-blooded monster who is his other self. The captain finally greets the mask, who now looks like an ordinary human. The captain wants to know where the mask's weapon is if he wants to hunt in that secret realm. The mask shows his fist and says it is the weapon he has. The captain thinks the mask is a martial artist who prefers to use his body as a weapon instead of buying weapons with money. The captain then wants to know the mask's level. The captain thought that the mask was very brave in coming to the secret realm, which meant that the man was very confident in his strength. He was worried that if the mask had the same level as him then he would take good loot in the secret realm. But the mask said he was at level 1 which immediately shocked everyone. The captain made sure the mask wasn't joking because entering the secret realm level 3 with level 1 strength was the same as courting death. 
The captain thinks the mask is just a crazy man trying to scare him. However, the mask casually brushed off the captain's hand and said that he had come to destroy the monsters. Another man taunts the mask. According to him, even the mask's level 1 strength wouldn't be able to defeat their level 2 healer. The archer spoke up. He advised the mask to just stay near the door and let them complete the secret realm. That way they can go out together when the door opens later. The archer knew that newbies like the mask would die without a chance of surviving. Again the mask refused. He said he wouldn't bother the hunter team. The captain, who had no other choice, finally allowed the mask to come along. He only reminded the mask that they would not help if something bad happened to him. The captain chose to continue the journey with the team members. On their journey, monsters began to appear. Each team member fights and helps each other. Meanwhile, the mask is still watching them all. That's when Yan Kayan approached the mask. Yan Kayan asked Zio Ku not to take the captain's unfriendly attitude to heart. Yan Kayan believes the captain is just worried that the newbie the mask will make a mistake. Yan Kayan warned that the mask could die if he wasn't careful. Zio Q then compared today's hunters who show improvement and are careful. For him, it is a matter of pride to see a lesson that was previously obtained with great struggle. Yan Kayan felt that Zio Q was talking like someone from the Commonwealth, but Yan Kayan quickly agreed. Hero must now implement a policy of strengthening professional training and fostering division of labor and professional cooperation. This can help reduce the death rate for low-level professionals, so that more talented professionals can emerge among humans. Yan Kayan then introduced herself. Yan Kayan introduced himself as a level 2 healer. Meanwhile, the mask introduced himself as a professional level 1 Zio Q and didn't have a career yet. Yan Kayan is of course curious because Zio Q hasn't chosen a career yet. Zio Q said that he was still thinking about it. Moreover, all of these careers are the mask's creations. Yan Kayan looks at Zio Q and says that he is not suitable to be a close combat fighter because only a man with a strong body like the captain can do it. Yan Kayan then asked if Zio Q had ever tested his spiritual power. Yan Kayan felt that Zio Q could be a spellcaster. Although spellcasters do not have strong defensive abilities, they have some advantages such as not having to stand on the front line and getting less damage. Yan Kayan then realized that she had talked too much and apologized. Suddenly Zio Q grabbed Yan Kayan's hand to avoid the attack of a spider monster. The archer said it was a shadow spider. Zio Q, who was close to the monster, easily grabbed its leg joint and then simply broke it. Then he lifted the broken leg into the air and thrust it very hard into the center of the monster's body. The spider monster lost easily in Zio Q's hands. Seeing the shadow spider die so easily, everyone was astonished. They thought Zio Q had certain knowledge that made him so strong. The captain asks if that is what a martial artist is capable of. But the other man immediately dodged it. He had never seen any professional martial artist who could do something like Zio Q did. He managed to simply crush the monster's most vulnerable joint and stab it through the eyeball in a short time. Zio Q had a deep understanding of the body structure of monsters and at the same time an understanding of himself. Zio Q looks capable of using his skills to fight at a higher level. On the other hand, Zio Q asked Yan Kayan to let go of her tight grip because the danger was no longer there. Zio Q said that he was almost choked by Yan Kayan's actions. Of course, the girl was embarrassed and immediately apologized. Zio Q tried to pay attention to the status of his system. He realized that the monster's path did not affect the level system. He can still gain levels by killing fellow monsters. Considering his current abilities, Zio Q was confident that he could raise his level quickly even better than in his previous life. Zio Q was confident that he could grow faster by using that fact as well as his fighting experience. The captain spoke to Zio Q again. He said the man was extraordinary and he had misjudged Zio Q before. The captain was also grateful that Zio Q had saved Yan Kayan before. The captain promised that when they finished, Zio Q would also get a share of the prize. Zio Q didn't care too much about the reward because it was natural to help each other in the secret realm. The captain felt insulted but had no choice but to confirm Zio Q's words. They tried to look for valuable items one by one that they could get from the bodies of the dead spider monsters. After finishing, they decided to continue their journey because the secret realm boss had not yet appeared. In the hope of returning to the real world when it's all over, the captain divides tasks among the teams. As usual, you will fight the boss while the others will keep you safe. The captain asked the girl on his team to use her fire technique to burn the net. The archer was quite relieved because the battle that day went very quickly. If they could get out soon, maybe he could watch the end of the mask's ongoing trial. His colleague immediately said that there was no point in watching the end of the trial either. Moreover, according to his predictions, the mask will be found guilty. The archer said that he was just curious about the mask's true face because until now no one had ever seen his true appearance. The girl then said that she heard a rumor saying that the mask was a woman. 
The girl also said that previously she was also a fan of the mask because he was the savior of humanity so she didn't expect the mask to kill everyone in Tuga City. That's when Yan Kayan shouted to defend the mask. Yan Kayan explains that from what she knows, there is a demon infection that has descended on the city and infected everyone and turned them into monsters. The mask is forced to kill them all as a final step. His teammates could only laugh at Yan Kayan who was still defending the mask. They thought Yan Kayan was a paid actor who was famous on the internet because he kept defending the mask. Of course, Yan Kayan quickly dodged it. The captain immediately stopped the argument. They chose to continue their journey until they arrived at a location that looked like a boss monster's nest. Their steps stopped there. The hunters were already curious about what kind of valuable materials they might find on the boss monster's body after it was killed. Meanwhile, the archer was more curious about the contents of the treasure box that had been guarded by the boss monster. Fire Girl added that monster bodies could also be sold to anatomists who also made a lot of money from their dissections. Not long after, the boss monster arrived. Its body size was even much larger than the previous spider monster. The fight resumed and the captain asked everyone to work together to hurt him so he could kill him. The boss monster was attacked from various directions by hunters. Zio Q knew that boss monsters at low levels had no intelligence. Therefore, he only needed to attack quickly so that the fight could end quickly. Sure enough, the monster was finally defeated. The captain laughed in front of the monster's corpse. He felt proud because, with good cooperation, they were able to complete the secret realm level 3 without the slightest injury. The captain will then distribute everyone's final prize of pepper in appropriate proportions. He also didn't forget Zio Q, who also had rights. Zio Q was confused because what he knew through the system was that the secret realm was at level 4 and not 3. The strangeness increased even more after they realized that the treasure box had not appeared. That's when something appeared not far from them. Everyone was certainly surprised to see him. A girl with an astronaut helmet appeared in front of them. The captain immediately concluded that the only reason why the treasure box didn't appear was because the girl was the real boss of the secret realm. The team members underestimated the presence of the girl wearing the astronaut helmet. To him, the boss wasn't scary at all and he, as a man, should be able to beat it. Who would have thought that the girl started running and the man also attacked? The archer shouted from a distance and cursed because such a direct attack could have been avoided. Lao Kai thought he had won when his weapon stuck and penetrated the secret realm boss's stomach. For him, the monster was easy to handle. However, as soon as he pulled out the weapon, the nets actually attacked from the secret realm boss wound and immediately caught Lao Kai's hand. Of course, I was shocked and just screamed in pain as the net wrapped around his hand even more. All his colleagues were of course worried. The captain tries to find a way. I knew the boss's spider web was thick and couldn't be cut with physical strength. Therefore, I asked the mage to attack it with fire, causing quite a large fire. When the mage attacks the secret estate boss with fire, the captain asks the archer to save Lao Kai before he gets hit by the fire. The problem was that the fire was too big and the archers had difficulty getting close. On the other hand, Lao Kai was surprised because the secret realm boss was completely unharmed and was now even sprouting many spider-like legs. The captain and others were also shocked because they had never seen such a boss. Suddenly the boss attacked and using his feet, he stabbed Lao Kai from behind. Lao Kai's death naturally sparked other anger. The archer was ready to kill the secret realm boss, but Zio Q quickly blocked his hand. If the archer forced his way with that much power of a realm boss then I would also end up the same as Lao Kai. The archer was certainly angry because Zio Q was holding him back. However, the captain also confirmed Zio Q's words. There would be no chance of winning in a reckless attack. The captain then asked how long it would take to open the secret realm portal. The fire mage replies that the portal will open in three hours. The captain now devised a new plan to slowly open the way, they returned to the entrance and once the portal opened, they could escape. The archer then warned of the arrival of the secret realm boss. The boss attacked again with the net and managed to catch the captain's hand. The archer intended to help and let go of his bow, but the boss once again easily blocked the bow and caught the archer's body. The secret realm boss apparently grabbed the archer's body. Meanwhile, from its stomach, the realm boss began to emit sharp teeth. Tulse the archer could only scream and everyone couldn't help but see what happened next. Tulsa's head entered the stomach of the secret realm boss and immediately died, leaving only his body to fall to the ground. The enraged captain prepared to attack the leg, but the attack failed. The secret realm monster boss's legs were not injured at all. The boss actually pulled the captain's body slowly. I thought his life would end there. Zio Q quickly asked for the captain's sword if I wanted to live. Zio Q plans to cut off the captain's arm so he can escape the net. Of course, the captain was worried, but I had no choice but to agree. 
He immediately handed his sword to Zio Q. Zio Q caught the sword and cut the captain's arm very hard. The captain screamed in pain as his hand was severed. Zio Q took the injured captain aside while Yan Kai and immediately treated the captain's wounds. The fire mage girl who saw all the terrible events could only be afraid. She wanted to run away because she didn't want to die in a place like that. Yan Kayan asked Zio Q why I didn't run away too. However, Zio Q said that the secret realm boss deliberately let the fire mage go because the fear that humans released when they ran away actually made it feel better for the realm boss. Zio Q explained that the boss belonged to a type of god's chosen monster that liked human negative emotions. Be it fear, jealousy, hatred, and everything is delicious food for them. Yan Kayan, who didn't understand, became curious. Zio Q explains that they are a type of monster chosen by the outer gods possesses rapid growth and terrifying strength as well as a very strange appearance. Zio Q indeed already understood the situation, because in his previous life, let alone God's chosen monsters, he had even killed many outer gods. However, in this life, when he had no power, Zio Q had actually received a difficult task such as Ghost Chosen. Zio Q could only blame the system at that time. Zio Q's prediction came true. The secret realm boss released poison from his body. Yan Kayan was only able to reach out to Zio Q and the captain to protect them from the poisonous smoke, but not the mage. However, it turns out that what the realm boss released was not poison but spiritual pressure. When the thick fog covered the entire cave, the monster was surprised because someone could still move freely. Who else if not Zio Q? Zio Q guessed that the monster was in amazement because it was not affected like the other targets. Zio Q said that even though I don't have the strength, its spirit and soul are still at level 14. Meanwhile, the monster's spiritual pressure is much lower. Plus Zio Q had just gained a new power because the monster thought to thank him. If only the monster hadn't killed the professionals, maybe Zio Q wouldn't have shown his seriousness in fighting either. Zio Q began to show his new form as a monster. He also said that it was an honor for a low-level god-chosen monster to meet him. The fight could no longer be avoided. Zio Q moved quickly and started to break one of the monster's legs. Of course, the monster started to hurt. Zio Q praised those long and beautiful legs. The monster started to attack, but Zio Q easily dodged it. He deliberately mocked the monster by saying its attack was very simple and it was very embarrassing. However, Zio Q admitted that he was not surprised because the monster was only God chosen level 1. But whatever it was, Zio Q would not let the monster live. Zio Q attacked again very quickly. He managed to break the monster's legs one by one and only left one leg. Zio Q wanted to end things quickly, so the monster chose to escape with difficulty. The monster finally fell and Zio Q was in front of it. The monster hoped for Zio Q's mercy. Of course, Zio Q didn't care. Zio Q actually reminded the monster again that he never thought about the possibility that I would be in a position like this. All this time the monster has been tormenting humans and now Zio Q wants it to turn around. Zio Q killed the monster with one stop. The system immediately informed me that Secret Realm Level 4 had been successfully completed and would receive a reward of spider legs. Those who survive will be sent out automatically. In the city, Yan Kai and walked alone. They finally managed to return from the secret realm two hours ago. Even so, everything still felt like a dream. Previously they had fallen into a coma due to strong spiritual pressure, but suddenly they had come out of the secret realm. Meanwhile, the captain, who was seriously injured, was also taken to hospital. Yan Kai and herself, who was fine, could go straight back home. The problem is, that Yan Kai and doesn't know Zio Q's whereabouts. I'm worried that something bad happened to Zio Q. But suddenly, Yan Kayan was shocked to see Zio Q in the distance. Zio Q still stood in front of the building and thought that I was sent to Da City by the system. So I thought about looking for a house to settle down. But he looked at the price board in front of him and realized that the cheapest rental price for a unit was 3,000 union dollars per month. In Zio Q's previous life, things like this were taken care of by other people. So he just had to focus on fighting. Now, he is confused because he has no money to pay the rent. Zio Q looked sad when he thought that he had no concept of money and all kinds of things. He would definitely have a hard time living in society. But at that moment, Yan Zixi finally greeted Zio Q excitedly. Zio Q recognized Zixi as a healer from the Secret Realm Level 4 without saying her name. Yan Zixi was annoyed and firmly said that her name was Yan Zixi. This girl asked Zio Q to remember her name well. Yan Zixi also said that she was grateful to see that Zio Q was fine. But Zixi was surprised to see Zio Q staring at the rental information board. So Zixi asked if the young man in front of her was looking for a place to live. Zio Q confirmed that. Yan Zixi asked if Zio Q didn't have any relatives or friends in Da City. Zio Q just answered nothing. It all sounds sad, considering that Zio Q saved many Da people in times of crisis. 
Yan Zixi finally understood and came up with a brilliant idea. Yan Zixi invited Zio Q and told him that Da City was only founded after the disaster, with a history of only 40 years. However, with the increasing development of urbanization, the old city center area which was originally uninhabited has become a peripheral village. Yan Zixi apparently invited Zio Q to her house. I explained that there was a separate room in the house, so Zio Q didn't need to worry about any inconvenience. Zio Q instead fixated on the symbol near the main door and asked Yan Zixi what it was. Yan Zixi explained that it was the medal his father received when he retired. Yan Zixi explained that her father was a hero and a soldier too. Compared to a level 2 professional like me, his father is much stronger. Her father was a level 5 professional melee and had also participated in many fights such as the Snow Howl fight and the defense of Yangman Pass. Yan Zixi lit up even more when she told me that her father once said that he fought side by side with Mask. Not only did they camp together, they even ate from the same pot of food. But his father told them this since childhood, so he didn't know whether it was true or not. Now that he thought about it, it all sounded like a lie. After all, their father really liked drinking. Maybe it was just her father's hallucinations when he was drunk. According to him, it was impossible for the mask to camp and eat with low-ranking officers. Zio Q then asked where Zixi's father is now. The girl answered with a sad face that her father was gone. Zixi explained that the war that had been going on for too long had made her father suffer. On the surface, the injuries suffered by Zixi's father had indeed been recovered but his father had lost too much vitality, so he died not long after being released from the army. Then Zio Q asked where Zixi's mother was. The girl answered that her mother had also died giving birth to her younger sibling. Zio Q looked at the girl in front of him with pitying eyes. But Zixi asked Zio Q not to put on such an expression because that happened years ago, so it doesn't mean much. Now doesn't Zio Q see that he is living well now? Yan Zixi invited Zio Q into her house. The girl asked for a moment, she would give Zio Q a blanket. But clothes like underwear or pajamas, Zio Q had to get himself. Yan Zixi then pointed to one of the rooms and explained that the room on the left side was empty and Zio Q could stay there. The room and everything are quite old but very well maintained so Zio Q doesn't need to worry. Zio Q thought, compared to being on the front lines in the past, that place was much better. He would pay the rent after making more money from the secret realm later. Suddenly a younger girl came out of the house and asked who the young man her older sister had brought. Yan Zixi explained to her younger sister, Kainlu, so you don't need to worry, because that young man was Zio Q, a colleague he met in the secret realm. Yan Zixi explained that Zio Q had just come to Da City and had no place to stay, so he would stay with them for a few days. The younger sister was surprised to hear that her older sister had returned with a colleague he had just met. Kyan Lu immediately snapped at her sister when she asked, how could her sister bring home someone she just met like this? Then Kyan Lu turned around and went back into the house. Yan Zixi immediately apologized to Zio Q about her younger sister. According to me, her younger sister is actually a very good child. She's just a little afraid of strangers so I get nervous when she sees outsiders. Zixi added, that today is the day of the mask court that she has admired since she was little and that's why she is like this. Meanwhile, Zio Q thought he didn't expect to have so many fans. In the room, Kyan Lu was busy replying to the haters who thought that the mask's departure was due to cowardice, who was irresponsible for giving up his power just like that. They even said that the mask was deliberately running away from his crimes. Kyan Lu asks can't those fools understand the mask's situation? The mask never takes away human resources. On the other hand, humans rely on masks. Humans should be grateful for the mask instead. Suddenly Zixi called her little sister from behind the bedroom door. The girl wanted to invite her little sister to go out to eat. But Kyan Lu refused because she was busy replying to comments from haters. Zixi tried to cheer up Kyan Lu and said that she had guests so at least the girl should come out. But Kyan Lu insisted on not wanting to show his face, after all their friend was not the mask. It's a pity, this young girl doesn't know anything. Finally, Zixi went to the dining table and apologized to Zio Q, because her little sister didn't want to eat with them and the dishes served were very simple. Zio Q picked up a side dish and said that he thought it was already very good. This young man remembered that he used to eat monster meat without any seasoning at the border, and at that time there was no rice at all. Even though some of the meat tasted better than the best spices in the world, most of it tasted like iron and had a strange bitter taste. At that time, Zio Q always felt that as long as he could fight the darkness for mankind, any food that was difficult to swallow would taste delicious. The television in the room showed an interview from a reporter with Professor Zhang. The reporter asked the professor what he thought about the disappearance of the mask. Professor Zhang replied that the federal parliament naturally had considerations on this issue, and as citizens, according to me, they must trust parliament. But there is a hypothesis that is spreading widely on the internet. 
According to me, the disappearance of the mask due to running away from his crimes and the claim to give up all his powers was just a show. After all, if someone really doesn't have any power anymore, how can that person have the ability to disappear before everyone's eyes? The reporter confirmed this, because I also see some pessimists who have bad views among people. According to me, The Mask is famous for making many contributions to the fight against monsters and his personal abilities are extraordinary. This reporter wonders will the hero's disappearance have a major impact on human peace. Some pessimists even think that humanity is destroying itself by losing The Mask. Professor Zhang replied that the argument was undoubtedly ridiculous and completely impossible because I think humans can reach this stage because they have survived one or of another the crises that have hit so far. They also never rely on the efforts of one person but are primarily led by members of parliament. That is what makes humans achieve brilliant victories. I think exaggerated myths about a person are not only desirable but also completely wrong and unfounded. Professor Zhang emphasized that without the earth the sun's rotation would still be the same. And without the mask, humans can also progress in glory. Yan Zixi who heard this asked if it was true, about the mask running away from his crimes. When Jiao Q asked, the young man was busy again scooping rice into his fourth bowl. Zixi then said that just looking at the habits of the mask, and the arguments from several figures on TV who said that the mask was running away from his crimes was a very bad thing. The girl was sure there must be a reason for the mask's attitude. Zio Q casually answered maybe. Zixi commented that the young man was very cold even though the figure they were talking about was the mask. Doesn't Zio Q care about that person? Zio Q immediately answered no. Zixi said that if her little sister saw this program she would probably immediately destroy the television. Suddenly there was a loud knock from the main door. The figure outside continued to pound on the main door impatiently. Zixi recognized that they must be people from the Kaijing Investment Company. They kept shouting and said they would burn the house down if the door was not immediately open. Zixi immediately came out and opened the main door. In front of them now there were four large men with ferocious faces staring at Zixi. They were happy. Finally, someone was willing to come out and open the door. Zixi immediately said firmly to them that their attitude had been very clear from the start. She won't sell the house. The figure of the man with a wound on the other side of his eye asked did 1111 not understand the situation? Because the girl's party seems to have disbanded today. Among them there are dead and injured, even the captain could die at any time. This cruel figure whose name is Tujin Kenzo approached Zixi and told the girl that as a premium customer of the Kaijing Investment Company, the girl would definitely benefit from them. And with their close relationship with the government, it is easy to find out various information. Now that you don't have anything to rely on, what else can make Zixi survive? The man continued to stare at Zixi's chest with a passionate face that seemed hungry. Zixi was still silent and didn't want to answer. But Tujin Kenzo said that I would give them five more days to consider. After five days if they are still not willing to cooperate with Kaijing, then things will get complicated. This man even offered a price of 100,000 as long as Zixi promised to give the land for the construction of their company. That way the 100,000 federal dollars will be directly transferred to Zixi's account. Hearing this shocked Zixi, because yesterday the price they offered was only 3 million. Tujin Kenzo said that the real estate market does not stay at a certain price. So yesterday only 3 million today can turn into $100,000. Tujin Kenzo urges 20 and questions is the price of 100,000 not enough. As far as I know, to treat sister Zixi's illness, the girl only has less than $30,000 in her account. It was at this time that Zio Q came out and made Tujin Kenzo astonished. Kenzo thought that maybe it was Zixi's lover. He immediately entered, reached out his hand, and gave Zio Ku an introduction as the head of the security department of Kaijing Investment Company. Without thinking, Zio Ku immediately shook Kenzo's hand. Zixi warns that Kenzo is a mage who specializes in mental attacks. But the warning was too late because now Kenzo had already used his powerful strength to enter Zio Ku's mind. Kenzo thought that after entering Zio Ku's mental world, I would directly damage Zio Ku's mind. Kenzo was in a good mood recently so he was going to give Zio Q a bit of a concussion and make him lie down for half a month instead. But he was surprised because it hadn't yet reached the center of Zio Q's thoughts. Kenzo was instead faced with a very wide ocean. The situation he faced made Kenzo panic and look around carefully. This was the first time Kenzo had met someone who had this level of mental strength. He wanted to immediately run away but suddenly there was a very big wave which immediately rolled over Kenzo's body. This man now realized that Zio Q's mental strength was on a very different level from his. By now Kenzo was already immersed in Zio Q's mental power. Not only that, he even saw a big red eye which made him scared and immediately lay unconscious in the real world. Kenzo's colleagues panic and try to wake him up. But the man didn't respond at all. Zixi was worried that they were just putting on an act to blackmail her because using mind control didn't work. 
Kenzo's colleague, who was angry at seeing his friend like that, immediately threw a punch at Zio Q. But one of the others stopped him and prevented his partner from using his brain. According to me, Kenzo's condition immediately became like this after he went to fight Zio Q. So they have to think about their actions carefully considering that Kenzo is the strongest among them. The person also told his colleague that Zio Q was definitely stronger than Kenzo because he managed to paralyze Kenzo in just a short time. He guessed that Zio Q might have reached level 3. They immediately tried to take Kenzo away, saying that it seemed they had made a mistake in underestimating Yan Zixi. They didn't expect that the girl could find such a strong supporter, but they warned the girl not to think that it all ended there. If Zio Ku dared to attack their people then it wouldn't end easily. After the people from the Kaijin group left, Zixi asked if Zio Ku had beaten Kenzo. Zio Ku casually answered that the person had asked for it himself. In fact, he himself had no intention of taking action. But that person insisted on entering his mental world. Zio Q then asked if those people had been bothering 20 for a long time. Zixi answered that they started coming four years ago not long after her father died. They suddenly come and want to buy a house in the name of foreign investment. But at that time they didn't have to sell their house to survive. So people from the Kaijin group kept trying to break into the house and took advantage of Zixi's absence. They often threatened the crippled Kayan Lu. Fortunately, Zixi later became a level 2 professional and joined the captain of the song team. Their team captain managed to chase those people away so they didn't dare cause any more trouble. But now, Zixi is worried that they will continue to come brutally like that because they know that Captain Song has had an accident. Zio Q asked what about the government's attitude. Because as far as he knew, descendants of soldiers like Zixi, whether in the military or locally, should be treated special. At that time, Zio Q was the mask who promoted the policy of preferential treatment for military families. Zixi responded that rather than treating military families well, the government treated those with wealth like the Kaijing Investment Company well. Zio Q just found out that his policy was actually implemented like that. That night, Zio Q helped Zixi wash the dishes even though the girl had told him not to. Zio Q said that if someone gave him help, then at least he should do as much as possible to show gratitude. Zio Q was already staying at Zixi's house and eating her cooking. So this is the only thing he can give to make Zixi's work easier. But Zixi answered that Zio Ku's presence was a big help because if the young man hadn't kicked out the people from the Kaijin group, she really didn't know what he would have done. Zixi asked what the young man's plans were next. Will Zio Ku join another team for the Secret Realm raid? Zio Ku confirmed that. Zixi herself actually still hopes that Chairman Song will wake up soon. But if not, she has no other choice but to look for another reliable party. As everyone knows, parties in the secret realm have very tight competition. Even stabbing each other at teammates is commonplace. Although under the words of the mask, federal law has stipulated that humans are not allowed to kill each other in the realm when no one is guarding, everyone acts as they please. Zixi turned to Zio Q and said that if I found a reliable party later, I would definitely recommend that young man to them. Zio Q just answered okay. This young man thought from the moment he stepped foot into the path of monsters I knew that no matter now or later no one would be able to fight side by side with monsters. In other words, this young man didn't really hope that he would find a party that would accept him. Suddenly the system appeared in front of Zio Q and explained the new task to be faced. It wasn't a challenging task but an unimaginable benefit might come if Zio Q was willing to raid in this realm. The requirement for this task is to clear the secret realm alone and the time is only 12 hours. Inside a large abandoned church, a dimensional portal appeared and a young man emerged from it. Zio Q, who had just come out of the portal, thought that luckily the system had a teleportation gate so he could enter any dungeon and whenever he wanted without an official request or official inspection from the relevant parties. This young man walked through the church and realized that the style of building the church was from the European Middle Ages. Right now in front of him, there are two statues commonly known as gargoyles. Suddenly the statues shook and they roared terribly. It is a level 3 scarlet gargoyle monster. When there are no enemies, the monster only looks like a statue but when people pass by it becomes a vicious beast. The stone-like quality of the statue's skin surface gives them immense defense while also making their fangs more dangerous. Zio Q still stood calm and thought that the stone gargoyle monster had a strong body and was not sensitive to magic. No matter physically or magically everything is difficult when handling it. This young man suddenly thought of Zixi, worried that if the girl met this monster, there would definitely be a lot of victims. One gargoyle monster jumped towards Zio Q brutally. With just one arm, Zio Q managed to catch the monster and immediately injured the gargoyle monster's neck. 
This young man said that unfortunately, the monsters met him. Two seconds and two hard gargoyle monsters were defeated. Zio Q makes his way into the church only to be met with more and more gargoyle monsters. Casually, Zio Q had transformed into a monster form asking the gargoyles to come to him at once. The newest island of Harmony instantly forgot its wings and flew towards Zio Q. So Zio Q jumped up and attacked the monsters with his bare hands. This young man's movements moved very quickly from one monster to another. He attacked the monsters so brutally that in a short time, dozens of gargoyle monsters were lost in his hands. There was only one gargoyle monster left whose two wings had been caught by Zio Q. Seeing the fear in the monster's eyes, Zio Q asked why the monster was afraid. Shouldn't rocks have no feelings? And Zio Q easily pulled the monster's two wings until its body separated into two. At this moment a gargoyle monster in the human body descended. He turned out to be the boss of that room. He is known as a level 4 Lux Stone statue. This monster is very different from the gargoyles because it was created a long time ago, and from its appearance, it can be seen that it is a destructive monster. System question, does Zio Q have the courage to crush the monster with his hands? Zio Q said that as a demon the monster had a human body and appearance. That appearance actually made Zio Q want to kill him even more. Quickly the two of them advanced to frequently attack and kill each other. Not long after, the church gate was broken open by a team. They entered carefully and realized that the place had already been cleaned by someone. A male member of the team asked the leader, hasn't the dungeon only appeared for less than 12 hours? And they were the first to enter. The chairman confirmed this, because the person from the inspection blue promised him before their team entered, the dungeon gate would be closed. But a woman from the team realized that before they entered, a crazy person had entered the dungeon. He looked at the texture of the Tacken present on the two fragments and realized that such an uneven texture could only be caused by close combat. The damage was caused by a force that was able to tear the statue like a fragile cloth. The team leader was clearly shocked to see someone who could crush or tear rocks using just his bare hands. He thought it was impossible until one of his colleagues pointed to a fairly high pole. On top of the pillar, there was a shattered stone statue of Lux with its chest pierced by its own spear. News about someone who succeeded in clearing a secret dungeon by himself immediately reached the Secret Realm Inspection Bureau organization in Doth City. The chairman at the end of the table looked annoyed to realize that several teams or individuals had avoided monitoring their inspections and entered the Secret Realm without registration. One of the members said isn't that a good thing. After all, the secret realm would be cleared by someone sooner or later. The chairman was angry when he heard this and said that on a smaller scale, this meant there were people in their organization who were secretly helping others enter the secret realm. So this could be considered a task. But in anything greater, the security of the Federation and even the entire human race would be in danger. The leader also said that if unregistered people entered the secret realm to destroy the monsters, then it would indeed be fine. But what if that person deliberately ambushed the expedition team in the secret realm? The chairman also emphasized that they all came from the new generation, so they had never experienced the difficult years when the Expedition Bureau had not been established. In the past, the biggest cause of casualties in the secret realm was not monsters, but knives from other humans. Humans should not die in such unnecessary internal conflicts. The chairman held a document and saw that the tragedy all started with the infiltration of level 4 gargoyles in the secret realm. Based on the level of the six secret realms that had been breached, the infiltration strength should be at the peak of level 4 or 5. One of the female employees in the room raised their hand and asked why the director could conclude that the incident was carried out individually rather than by a group. The director answered that it was simple because if it was done by a group with many professionals, then the wounds left on the slain monsters would be different. However, based on the report files from the scene, all the monsters were brutally destroyed and from that sign, they could conclude that the dungeon had been cleared by the same person and because it was done by a single individual. After clearing so many secret realms, it would be impossible for him to use all the loot obtained. So the director immediately gave strict orders to continue monitoring Doss City and the surrounding professional trading market to see if anyone had recently been selling loot that met the requirements of the seven secret realms. As soon as there is news they must immediately report it back to the office. All the members in the room immediately stood up and answered in unison that they were ready to carry out the director's orders. Meanwhile at the professional trading market in Doss City, a large trader handed over a large amount of payment to Zio Q. The young man realized that he had sold his loot at a cheap price again seeing the shop owner's expression which looked very happy. But the materials he got from the secret realm were of little use to him. So he decided to sell those items instead. After all, as long as he completed the system tasks he would continue to become stronger. Zio Q looked at the money in his hand and thought that with it, he would be able to cover Zixi's house rent. Suddenly this young man heard a girl making an offer to a shop seller. The girl turned out to be Zixi. She asked the tavern keeper to pay attention again. Even though the long sword he was carrying looked a little old, 
It had already killed many monsters, and even though the sword had been kept at home for many years, Zixi still often took it out to be repaired so it was still very sharp. But the shop owner said that the sword was worthless because it was full of scratches and the sword was thin. The merchant said that he was worried that the sword would break in a short time, so if the sword still fetched a price as a scrap item, he thought it was still pretty good. Yan Zixi looked sad hearing this. She didn't expect that the sword her father left behind was considered used goods. The shop owner said again that the girl didn't need to be too sad because I would take the sword for 3,500. Yan Zixi apologized in her heart to the sword because she actually didn't want to sell the sword either, but if she didn't do it then her little sister's medical expenses would be delayed. Meanwhile, the arms dealer had other thoughts. He was happy to get a customer who didn't know anything about the guy's been in the equipment collecting field for 30 years so I can never go wrong. The material of the sword contains specially forged hot iron, so this material is very valuable and can be obtained in a few secret realms. If the sword's coal iron is not extracted then I can immediately make more than 10,000 after cleaning the sword well. When the merchant increasingly pressured Zixi to give him the sword, Zio Q appeared and prevented the girl from selling the sword. Zixi asked what Zio Q was doing at that place. The young man replied that they could discuss that later. Zio Q had to research the sword that Zixi was carrying and found out that it was a level 5 professional long sword which was special equipment. Although at face value it could only be long aged and only contain some rare special metal materials, what some people didn't know was that the metal was once stained with the blood of a demon god so you could say that weapons are a blessing or a disaster. Zio Q immediately told Zixi that he wanted the sword, but the trader was clearly offended because this girl had negotiated the price with me, so he didn't think it was appropriate for Zio Q to suddenly come and interfere like that. But the young man didn't want to listen to what the old trader said and immediately handed the money to Zixi, asking if that amount was enough. The merchant could only pat his head in frustration because he failed to get any good goods. Currently, Zio Q and Zixi are sitting together on a park bench. Zixi said that if it was Zio Q who bought the sword, then I would sell the item for at least 1,500 at most because that young man had saved his life more than once. So I can't put such a big price on Zio Q. But Zio Q refused the money because Zixi had given him a place to stay to pay for saving his life. So Zixi had to accept the money as the current accommodation fee. Also, the cost of food because the girl's food is very delicious. But Zixi still said that the money didn't matter to her and the money was still too much. Finally, Zio Q forces the girl by saying that you have to accept the money because as her helper, Zio Q forced the girl to accept it. Moreover, the sword you are holding is not a simple sword either. Although this young man couldn't say it now, he could tell Zixi that the sword was worth more than 10,000. Zixi obviously didn't expect this because the sword had only been left at home since childhood. But according to his conclusion, the sword was full of secrets like Zio Q. According to Zixi, everything the young man did was a mystery, because he was able to leave earlier than their team from the secret realm. And that young man also managed to earn so much money in a short time. But Zixi wouldn't dig into all those secrets or be curious about them. This girl also promised not to tell this to anyone else. She only asked that Zio Q be nice to the flying crown sword. Because it was the last thing my father left behind for me and my sister. Zio Q held the sword and thought that the sword was just like a crow that came and went freely. Hiding in the garden and he thought that was a very appropriate name for the sword. Zixi said that I felt like a useless girl and an unfilial child because I couldn't even protect the last thing from his father. But if I don't do this then I won't have money to treat my sister. When Jio Q asked about Kyan Lu, 20 started telling stories. The tragedy began when a great ghost monster appeared in the city of Da. At that moment no matter whether soldiers, heroes, or professionals in the city, all of them were destroyed directly in front of that demon. So registered professionals and veterans joined the fight. It was through the sacrifices of these people that ordinary citizens were able to move to a safe place. Zixi's father was also killed in the incident. All that remains is the flying crow that was found. The most deadly thing about the great ghost is its deadly radiation. The radiation is capable of turning the sky a sad green. Even the color of every cloud, flagstone, and green grass were all covered by that radiation. Ordinary people who are close to the great ghost instantly became a pool of blood, and those who are a little further away will lose their lives, and Kyan Liu who was touched by the tip of the radiation was finally paralyzed, even though Zixi's little sister was very talented with the sword. In elementary school, his younger sister could beat older people with a wooden sword. Everyone was sure that Kyan Liu would become a level 5 swordsman just like their father or even stronger. Even their father said that Kyan Liu was born for the sword. But because of the great ghost, Kyan Liu now has to receive regular treatment from high-level professionals. Otherwise, it will cause radiation and in the end, his little sister will become a pool of blood too. With a sad face, Zixi said that she had also given up on her close combat career. 
The girl chose the healer profession which has a higher level of survival in the realm. Zio Q knew that the Great Ghost had finally been dealt with after he was moved from the front line to the back line. Even though the monster was destroyed with just one fist, unfortunately, the monster was defeated after 10 hours of rampage in the city of Da. Zio Q himself didn't expect that such a weak monster would have such a huge impact on the lives of ordinary humans. That's why he hates monsters so much. Zio Q then said that he remembered that after the Great Ghost incident, the mask arranged for the federal government to allocate a large amount of funds to ensure the safety of every disaster victim's life. Shouldn't Kai and Liu's condition be restored with those funds? Zixi was even surprised that something like that happened because she had never heard of it before. Zixi stood up and said that after she talked about the matter, it felt like the burden on her heart was lifted a little and she felt more comfortable. It felt like she got rid of a big rock in her heart. Zixi also invited Zio Q to immediately return home and she would prepare food with her excellent level of cooking skills. As the two of them walked away from the park, several people from the expedition office came and looked for the secret realm thief. One of them asked whether they could find the thief in the market. The brown-haired man asked his friend to believe in the director's analysis. If the thieves wanted to sell stolen objects, they would come to a place like that market and their colleagues would have already investigated several underground trading places. The two of them went to the secret realm professional goods sales market. The two of them didn't realize that the thief, who turned out to be Zio Q, had just left. Meanwhile, at home, Kai and Liu was still annoyed at annoying people on the internet. Kai and Liu poured water while grumbling and said he would spit it out on them all. Suddenly this girl heard a knock on the main door which sounded very rough. Kai and Liu realized that the knocking was not like the way her older sister knocked on the door. So Kai and Liu was sure it was people from the Kaijing Investment Company. This poor girl was immediately shocked to realize this fact. Their door continued to be banged very roughly. Kai and Liu, who was at home alone at that time, began to feel a very terrifying aura. Kai and Liu picked up a wooden sword that was in the corner of the room. Then she waited in front of the main door. The main door made of wood immediately opened because it was kicked by someone from the Kajin group. The figure who kicked in the door smiled happily to see that the only one in the house was the disabled little girl. Kai and Liu tried to stay strong by pointing a wooden sword at the man. The man asks if the little girl tried to stop him with a toy wooden sword like that. Kai and Liu tried to attack the big man with the wooden sword that she was holding. The big man just took a step back and commented that the girl's attitude was quite impressive. Poor Kai and Liu fell from his wheelchair because he couldn't maintain his balance while trying to attack the man. Kai and Liu could only curse with an annoyed face. The big man stepped on the Kai and Liu wooden sword and asked why the little girl failed to parry even though she was standing calmly in her place. The man called Kai and Liu a very poor, disabled little boy. The big man told his people to search the house and look for Zixi and Zion Q, especially Zio Q who had injured his person. The big man wanted to let Zio Q know the consequences he would receive if he offended someone from Kaijin Company. They all entered the house and messed up the house. They ransacked the entire contents of the house until finally making a report to the chairman that they had searched every room and there was no one else in the house. The chairman cursed in annoyance. He then looked at Kai and Liu and said that they couldn't leave empty-handed. The chairman said that they could bring the cripple back because he believed the other two people would come to them willingly to save Zio Q. The poor girl could only continue to curse at the man in front of her and vowed to kill the big man. One of the big man's men said that taking the disabled girl was a good idea but that would mean it would be a kidnapping case. So if everything is taken out then they will be in big trouble. The chairman confirmed it but if they just left like that they wouldn't leave an impression on the other two people. The chairman touched his lower shoulder and said that the guy had thought about this matter carefully so he would give him an assignment. The chief handed the man a key and told him to wait in the truck. When two other people appeared, the man was able to immediately drive his truck, breaking into the yard. The ruthless chief said that the incident could have been a minor accident because the truck lost control, and the truck will be filled with special gifts collected from bins throughout the neighborhood. After all, they will be law-abiding citizens. The man immediately obeyed his leader's orders and ran out of the yard. That night it rained very heavily. Lightning occasionally strikes very fast. Zixi and Shio Q were running home when they suddenly arrived in the yard. They saw that the main gate had been destroyed. What made Zixi the most angry was that she saw her younger sister fall from her wheelchair and couldn't get back into the wheelchair. Kai and Liu could only continue cursing at the bastards who had now left. The man from the Kaijong group, who saw that Zixi and Zio Q had returned, immediately drove a truck backward until it hit the fence of Zixi's house. Then he spilled all the rubbish in their yard. Then, with an innocent face, the man said that he had mistaken the house for a rubbish dump. 
The man told them to rain, clean the rubbish, and clean themselves. Don't forget the man said that the trash was the first gift from their Kaijong company. Kai and Liu, who had been helped by Zio Q to sit back in his wheelchair, tried to call and help his older sister, Zixi. But the girl was immediately stopped by Zio Q. The young man said that if Kai and Liu approached his older sister now, it would make him feel even sadder. Zixi turned around and quickly stepped into the house without paying attention to Kai and Liu and Zio Q. Zixi's figure, who was usually friendly and smiling, was now gone. Kai and Liu and Zio Q were still standing on the terrace looking at the courtyard with sad faces. Kai and Liu asked why did things turn out like this. Can Zio Q explain to him why there is no justice in this world for their family? Zio Q said that justice never existed. Kai and Liu asked again whether justice would exist in the future. Zio Q coldly answered no. Kai and Liu asked again, isn't there at least justice that the great people in this world are trying to create? Zio Q answered that the justice that Kai and Liu wanted was created from injustice too. Even the rain that falls on each person is not the same. Rain falls on those who suffer and also on righteous people. This world is not fair that's why rain that falls on a world that doesn't exist is also not right. Zio Q smashed the Kai and Liu wooden sword, making the girl cry loudly. Zio Q said that in his eyes the Kai and Liu family matter was just a small matter. It is just a matter of misery where there is an even greater misery on top of it. He was not interested in the problems and injustices Kai and Liu and 20 faced, because his energy must be focused on other more important things. But trouble always came to him and he started to feel pain. Zio Q started to step out of the terrace, walking leisurely under the heavy rain. When Kai and Liu asked where the young man wanted to go, Zio Q replied that he would go to eliminate them. He knew this was troublesome and boring but he always liked to curb boredom with another kind of boredom and use violence to get rid of problems. Zio Q drew his new sword with an extremely terrifying dark look in his eyes. Who knows what terrible things this young man will do. That night everyone in the big Kaijong building was very happy and enjoyed their evening leisurely. They didn't expect that there was a man with black hair standing with cold eyes full of anger. The guards at the Kaijong building relaxed when they saw Zio Q enter carrying a weapon. The two guards immediately approached Zio Q and called the boy to put away his weapon. But Zio Q ignored them and continued walking into the building. This young man immediately cut down the two guards without much ado. The two guards immediately fell apart in front of everyone, causing everyone to panic and scream in fear. The system appeared and notified that Zio Q's mission was the blood sacrificial blade, namely triggering the power of the sword and feeling a lot of blood on the battlefield. The sword's power was once again awakened by blood. The mission requirements are to use the flying crown sword to eliminate all creatures that are hostile to it. The reward from the mission is the flying crown sword which will use blood to upgrade. Several other guards came out of the room carrying weapons. Their chairman asked his members to be careful because their opponents were aggressive intruders. Zio Q was surrounded by four guards. They jumped together to beat Zio Q. But this young man without hesitation immediately cut off the heads of the two guards who came at him. Another guard tried to attack Zio Q from behind. But Zio Q cut off that person's arm first and slashed through his body without hesitation. Unfortunately, Zio Q's sword got stuck in the guard's body. The other guards thought that it was an opportunity so they had to immediately attack Zio Q. They came forward again to attack Zio Q. But Zio Q immediately hit their bodies until they vomited blood in another co. Guard was on the spot. The other guards were surprised to see that Zio Q could hit someone so hard even though he was only a weapon user. Generally, weapon users are not that great at close-range physical combat. Under the roar of rain and thunder outside, inside the Kaijong building, there was a massive massacre by Zio Q. This young man continued his blood-filled steps to go deeper into the building. His cold expression made ordinary people run away from him. In his room, Kaijong's head of security, Lai Rong Kai was saying that he must get the two sisters' house immediately. After all this suffering if they still survive then don't blame him for using other methods. However, there are no such stupid people in Aonia. Right, a fellow chairman Lai Ronki said, in the end, you Lai Ronki still have to act, as long as this site is redeveloped, we will make huge profits. Suddenly, someone came into the room and shouted saying that there was something very urgent. Someone killed him on his way in. With fear on his face, this man explained that that person carried out a killing spree in the lobby and killed many people. Fellow chairman asks how many intruders. In the information, the carrier answered, only one. Co-chairman Lai immediately said that one person dared to barge in alone, so he must be tired of living. In his heart, Chairman Lai started to panic. He thought, our team at Kaijong always looks for the right target before taking action. We don't bother with high-level professionals or people who have influence and power. Finally, this cruel leader invited his colleagues to come out and check. Chairman Lai even took out his big axe which made people shiver. As they walked down the hall, at the end of the hall they saw someone screaming in fear, begging to be spared. 
but in the end, he was attacked and died covered in blood. The figure who slashed the person finally showed his face from the stairs. Xiao Q's expression was cold and full of hatred. Just from the look in his eyes, he succeeded in making people run away in fear. But Chairman Lai asked his colleagues not to be afraid because they were level 4 professionals. According to him, the three of them were extraordinarily strong and great people. Hearing Chairman Lai's words made his two colleagues enthusiastic again. They immediately became alert with their respective strengths. Xiao Q asked if was it true that they were only level 4 professionals. The chairman answered while asking whether Xiao Q was afraid now. If Xiao Q surrendered quietly, the chief would leave his corpse intact. He also said that he still doesn't know what enmity you have with Kaijong Company. Someone on the chairman's side said that Xiao Q was the man who just appeared at Yan Zixi's house. He was the one who put Tujing in a coma, so Chairman Lai just found out it was Xiao Q. Xiao Q said three level four professionals would be troublesome if I maintained my human form. So, this young man casually destroyed the light switch nearby, making the room dark. The three of them started to panic and asked what he was trying to do. Maybe he was thinking of sneaking up on us in the dark. Is he an assassin or a scout who is stronger in the dark? But, in the dark, I am the king who controls time and space. Night vision, activate. One man immediately activated night vision. With this ability, he can see in the dark just as well as during the day. But the man was still shocked when he saw that what was in front of him was not a human, but a monster with a terrible appearance. The man who had night vision was Xiao Q's first target. Even though the man could use a gun, he was less fast than Xiao Q's movements and attacks. Chairman Lai panicked and asked if the member who had night vision and was named Joseph was still there. Because Chairman Lai could smell blood, he was afraid that his members would get hurt or die. Unfortunately, Joseph can no longer answer because he is already dead. The sky was thundering with thunder, suddenly Xiao Q was standing right in front of Chairman Lai. But this time Chairman Lai's life was saved because he managed to block Xiao Q's sword attack with the handle of his large axe. Chairman Lai realized that if he was even a second slower to react then he would die. One fellow leader who saw his colleague being attacked immediately created a very large ice arrow arc. He immediately aimed the attack right at Xiao Ku's body, but that big man managed to be stopped with just his bare hands, then destroyed easily. Xiao Ku turned towards the blonde man, then in the blink of an eye, the blonde man's head was chopped off in Xiao Ku's hands. Just as Chairman Lai saw his comrade being killed, he was immediately slashed, and his head was severed. Chairman Lai's neck was bathed in terrifying fresh blood. Now in front of Xiao Ku stood three adult men. Under the thunder that struck, they could see that their current opponent was a monster. But before they responded, Xiao Q had chopped their bodies until they fell into a pool of blood. At that time a man was shouting for Xiao Q to stop. When he looked up, he realized that there was a level 6 professional looking at him casually. The man asks if Xiao Q is a demon, but he didn't have the madness of a demon. Then he guessed that it was a professional type of transportation. But it also doesn't seem like it's because transportation type professionals can't transform into demons with very identical breath levels. And, the man came down from the stairs and casually said a creature like Xiao Q, who could stand between humans and demons was the first he had ever seen in the world. After getting closer, this man was sure that what was in front of him was a real demonic creature. Without wasting any time he immediately drew his sword and attacked Xiao Q's body as fast as lightning. Such a fast movement could not be avoided by Xiao Q. According to him, the young man was just a demonic creature with the tenacity of a cockroach. Then the man pointed his sharp sword straight at Xiao Q's chest. Luckily Xiao Q managed to dodge to the side. But that is also part of the strategy of a level 6 professional man. Because when his victim dodges to the side he will immediately take out a gun from his other arm and shoot straight at his opponent's head. With that, a huge explosion occurred right at Xiao Q's head. This man thought in all his years of fighting he would never fail this technique. Moreover, at such a close distance, the face of the demonic monster in front of him would be instantly destroyed. He felt a little regretful that the head of the monster he was targeting would be destroyed but he thought the body of the creature would be quite valuable. But this man's hopes were immediately dashed when the smoke in Xiao Q's head cleared. Because Xiao Q's head was still intact and not scratched at all. The man was stunned to see this impossible thing. Of course, the boss was surprised. Xiao Q shouldn't have survived if he was shot from such a close distance. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Xiao Q was very calm. Of course, he wouldn't be fooled by that attack pattern. The boss naturally wanted to know how Xiao Q could do it. Xiao Q said that the attacks the boss made were 19 rapier styles. Of course, to get to that level, the boss must have tried very hard. The 19 rapier style attack was a special swordplay designed by him when he was still the mask. This style can be learned easily but if you can reach a high level, the style can be modified into various types. Its main characteristics are high agility, 
Damage and Evasion 19 styles of rapier can kill targets precisely and can be used simultaneously on 7 people without hurting yourself. Zio Q then said that the swordsmanship he created should be utilized properly by the right people, but it was a shame that the boss didn't study it that far. The boss naturally thought Zio Q was talking nonsense. The monster in front of him must have lost his mind because he recognized the swordsmanship as his creation. Even though this knowledge was clearly created by the mask for the right purpose, namely killing monsters like Zio Q. Zio Q casually confirmed that he was indeed a monster, but what the boss and the Kaijong company had done was also wrong because it had destroyed many families. The boss then responds that he doesn't know who Zio Q really is or where he actually comes from. He also doesn't care whether Zio Q came to take revenge or avenge the victims of land eviction. The only thing the boss cared about was killing the monsters that might be able to stop the development of the world, and the humans that should be able to progress indefinitely. For him, whether human or monster, hindering his work was a sin that had to be cleansed and he felt he was on the right side for that. It seemed to him that Zio Q would never understand such thoughts. Zio Q understood the boss's choice. He started to remove his spider legs from his body and attacked the boss again. It didn't take long for Zio Q to knock the boss's sword away and then hit it against the wall with his foot. The surviving boss clearly saw Zio Q's powerful sneak attack that he had never seen before. The boss is naturally curious about what kind of monster Zio Q really is. Zio Q said that he had very clearly revealed his identity. Zio Q took over the sword that previously belonged to the boss. Once in his hand, the sword quickly transformed. Zio Q saw the system appear and provided information about the sword named Blood Raven. Zio Q looked at the sword in his hand. The sword had unlimited power and could continue to grow infinitely. The sword could even tear the ground. Zio Q saw that nothing had changed in the shape of the sword, but he could faintly feel a heartbeat in the sword that had changed name and ownership. Zio Q was quite happy because he, who was a monster with unlimited growth, could find a sword with unlimited growth too. They will suit each other very well. Zio Q actually intended to leave, but one of Kaijong's subordinates saw that his boss had died. Of course, he was frightened when he saw Zio Q's figure and begged not to be killed. As if testing the strength of his sword, Zio Q asked the Blood Raven to attack. The power even spilled out of the Kaijong Company building. Outside the Kaijong Company, it turns out that there are already a lot of troops standing guard. Under Commander Jiang's command, they surrounded the company building. All lines have been maintained both above the building and even in the underground pipe network. They were ready to attack but Commander Jiang asked them to wait. The commander asked his men to persuade anyone in the company to surrender. He also wanted to find out what was really going on inside before making a decision. He didn't want to attack rashly because it could hurt many innocent people. In his mind, Commander Jiang knew what the Kaijong company was like. He believes that more than half of the Kaijong company's residents are guilty. The problem remains that it is the federal responsibility to punish people in Kaijong companies. Even if they tried to escape, Commander Jiang was sure he could punish them. Someone suddenly shouted that a man had just left the company. On the other hand, Yan Kayan was surprised when Kayan Liu told her the story. Yan Kayan was of course worried because Zio Q went to Kaijong company alone with a sword. Yan Kayan thought the young man would die there, so I went with an umbrella and then ran. Kayan Liu actually asked to come along, but Yan Kayan left the house first. As soon as she arrived at Kaijong Company, Yan Kayan was immediately intercepted by a soldier. The person confirmed Yan Kayan's identity. Yan Kayan wanted to know if something bad had happened. The officer said that they just needed to check something and needed Yan Kayan's cooperation. Of course, Yan Kayan wanted to know what the inspection was. The officer then asks if you recognize a man, none other than Xiao Qiu, who has apparently been arrested. Zio Q was in the exclusive prison of the city defense force. Commander Jiang observed him from behind the one-way glass and asked his troops if the man had not told them his name and origin. His subordinates said that Zio Q had confessed to Kai Jiang, but they knew nothing other than his name. His name is Zio Q, but no birth certificate, shopping information, proof of travel, or any other accessible information was found. Zio Q was like a ghost who was escaping completely from the government's observation. The officer also said that he began to investigate Zio Q more deeply and found out that he had a relationship with a woman named Yan Kayan. Yan Kayan apparently had the intention to pick up Zio Q, but apart from that, it turns out that there is another party who is hunting Zio Q. They were people from the Secret Realm Surveillance Bureau. It was previously said that they were looking for a mysterious thief who escaped surveillance and entered the Secret Realm, namely Zio Q. Commander Zhang felt that everything about Zio Q was really mysterious. Then he wanted to hear more about Yan Kayan. The officer explained that Yan Kayan was a level 2 professional healer and her father was a level 5 professional. 
Commander Zhang was quite surprised to hear Yan Kian's father's level. The officer continued that Yan Kian's father had joined the army but had retired and his strength was declining due to injuries. Initially, Yan Kian's father was supposed to be a government official in Da City, but Yan Kian's father refused. After that, he died in an extraordinary incident several years ago. Yan Kian's younger sister, named Kian Lu, was also disabled for life as a result of the incident. The officer continued that Yan Kian had been exploring the secret realm of the team called the Steel Cutting Squad. He met Zio Ku who appeared suddenly in a secret realm. Yan Kian's statement has been proven to be consistent with the statements of other Steel Cutting Squad members. The officer continued that the reason Zio Ku went to Kaijong Company was because the company planned to acquire the land where Yan Kian and Kian Liu lived. Therefore I acted by killing everyone in the company. Suddenly a voice answered saying that Zio Ku was a bloodthirsty swordsman. Commander Jiang turned his head and it turned out to be Arthur's secretary. Director Arthur invites Commander Jiang to go in alone and interrogate Zio Q. The officer admitted that both of them were the strongest warriors in Da City, so I was sure Zio Q wouldn't move around and cause trouble. Commander Jiang walked into the room and Zio Q looked at him deeply. Commander Jiang was surprised because he felt there was something strange about Zio Q's gaze, as if he was remembering something. Commander Jiang greeted Zio Q. He said that after what Zio Ku did he should have known what consequences he would receive. Zio Ku might be immediately sentenced to death or have to pay a fair amount to pay for his crimes. Zio Ku might have been sent to a redemption battalion to then be sent to the most terrifying front line with the highest death rate. As long as Zio Q can go through many battles and kill many monsters, then Zio Q can be considered to have atoned for his sins and can return to the human world. In his mind, Commander Jiang knew that even if I said so, no one would come back alive after being sent to the Redemption Battalion. Most of the evildoers sent there even died from the first fight and they had to fight at least 100 or even 3000 monsters for some criminals. Zio Q asks if Commander Jiang thinks going to the front lines is a punishment. In his mind, Zio Q felt that he should be able to commit more crimes against humans because so far he had fought many monsters which meant the same thing. He had done that penance many times. Commander Jiang said that Zio Q's words sounded like someone who had been on the front lines. Zio Q confirmed that he had been on the front lines for some time. Commander Jiang naturally wanted to know what status brought Zio Q there and Zio Q said that on the front lines with another status. Of course, that answer made Commander Jiang think hard. There are not many professionals who are qualified to go to the front lines and survive. Therefore it should be easy to compare Zio Q's photo with the professional list and find out his identity. Commander Jiang said that he and Director Arthur had also previously been stationed on the front lines. Both of them had been on the front line of monsters for even 10 years and had been considered veterans. Previously, only the mask and the first group of heroes could form the front line. Commander Jiang showed the medal on his shirt which was a medal given to him by the mask because previously he had also fought under his command. He is tasked with keeping the mask far behind. Director Arthur added that if it was true that Zio Q had been on the front lines, then he should also know that their struggle for peace was never easy. If Zio Q caused such chaos, it was not impossible that Da City's reputation would have been ruined in front of the federal parliament. Zio Q entering the secret realm without the monitoring bureau's supervision could already cause social unrest. In particular, it may cost one professional's life, but in general, the entire city of Da may even be destroyed. Commander Jiang was aware of Zio Q's mysteriousness, but being uncooperative in front of the federal government would actually be detrimental to him. Commander Jiang hopes that Zio Q can take care of himself and admit his actions. If Zio Q was sent to the federal capital, he would definitely not meet good people like Commander Jiang and Director Arthur anymore. The two finally left while Zio Q thought again about the federal capital. He would definitely be happy to go back there, but the problem is that he has a new task, namely defeating a great obscenity. The great obscenity was not completely eradicated last year. Infectious radiation remains in the human body which can explode at any time. Great obscenity can be reborn from the accumulation of increasing infections over time. Actually, there is a chance to clear all remaining infections. The problem turns out the federal government isn't doing it. Zio Q was going to fight a disaster level monster, Great Obscenity, which was said to have a very high disaster level. His strength was even as strong as level 13 while the weakest was at level 7 or 8. Zio Q was not surprised at the arrival of the Great Obscenity because it had already happened in his previous life. In the past, not long after the mask completed the test, the Great Obscenity found an infected professional and he used that body and was reborn. Great Obscenity is the same as weeds. As long as there is even the slightest infection tormented, it can accumulate strength and grow in spring. 
Meanwhile, the mask was sent to the front lines and immediately worked tirelessly to resolve the crisis in Das City. At that time, Great Obscenity also did not take many victims or cause damage. The mask can beat him with a few hits. Even so, the mask is still widely insulted. At that time everyone said how the mask arrived late even though he should have arrived early. They also said how they had given light punishment, but the mask turned out to be ungrateful. They also blamed the mask for the reappearance of great obscenity because he was deemed not to have cleaned up from the start. They also demanded that the mask apologize. Meanwhile, the mask still has to stand tall amidst the wave of criticism. Finally, he also had to be tried and apologized. But in this life, there is no longer the mask but only Zio Q. Then he should no longer care whether humans live or die. On the other side of the room, Commander Jiang and Director Arthur were still watching Zio Q. Director Arthur wants to know what Commander Jiang thinks about Zio Q who claims to have been on the front lines. Commander Jiang didn't know either because he had retired from there a long time ago and Director Arthur should be the one who understands the situation of the monsters on the front lines better. However, Commander Jiang had never seen anyone with such great strength at such a young age. Judging from the injuries of the victims at Kaijong Company, Zio Q clearly had speed. Apart from that, he also has a strange weapon. Commander Jiang felt that Zio Q was definitely not a professional, but perhaps someone with dual abilities or even undergoing system classes at the same time. Director Arthur felt that Zio Q was a genius. From what he knew other people wouldn't be able to reach professional level 6 even after a lifetime of study. But with such a young age Zio Q managed to cut off the head of a professional level 6 and also easily walk through the multiple grade system. Commander Jiang did not agree with the term genius that Director Arthur said. For him, Zio Q was a stupid genius because for him it was very unwise to risk his life on the front line for trash like Kaijong Company. However, Commander Jiang had no choice but to hand Zio Q over to the Federation. Let them be the judge. Director Arthur agreed. Moreover, this Federation is also the same Federation that has tried the mask. Although compared to the mask, they weren't sure whether a petty criminal like Zio Wu needed to be tried in the Federation. In the capital of the federal government, Star City, humanity that survived the Dark Ages then rebuilt their cities. The sites that can be seen are second and even third tier cities from the 20th to 21st centuries before the Dark Ages. However, unlike Star City, which became the federal capital, the city was rebuilt with the concept of a future science fiction city. In the meeting room, He Yao and his members were gathering to discuss Zio Q's problem. Zio Q was considered a tough bandit who could kill dozens of people in one night, even a level 6 professional. That incident was not only a psychological distortion but also an insult to the federal public power. They thought that what Zio Q did was just a reckless and barbaric killing. He Yao noticed Zio Q's photo. He was quite amazed to see a face that was still young but could already kill a level 6 professional. He Yao felt that he was quite talented. One of the members immediately became angry. So far the Federation has spent a lot of money on geniuses. The more talented a person is, the more dangerous he is to society. So they should execute people who openly provoke the federal government like Zio Q. If this is not the case, people will not feel calm and live and work in peace. The member still urged He Yao to execute Zio Q in public so that he could set an example. In his heart, he was angry because all this time he had always benefited from the Kaijong company. Even though it wouldn't be difficult for him to get help from other companies, nothing could replace his losses during the hiatus. He Yao understood. He then asked Zio Q to be sent to the front lines and placed him in the 1st Division of the Redemption Battalion as punishment. Members were previously disappointed that Zio Q was not publicly executed. He actually didn't agree because he was currently still under the supervision of another company. If he failed to punish Zio Q then all of them would no longer believe or be reluctant to him. He Yao didn't want to listen to any more rebuttals. He had more important things to discuss. He Yao was more annoyed because no one knew about the mask. He Yao was angry and he was sure that the mask couldn't just disappear like that. He must be somewhere in the world. It could even be that he was around He Yao or someone else. The problem was that even after disappearing for so long, they couldn't find anything. He Yao was worried that one day there would be another party who might make a fuss. Lawmakers tried to calm He Yao. They remind me that the mask no longer has powers. That meant he wouldn't be able to threaten them. Of course, He Yao got even angrier. If it's true that the mask doesn't have powers, he shouldn't just disappear from the courtroom. The members then tried to remind them that they could all feel the loss of the mask's power at that time. The little bit of strength left would be nothing. Other members immediately responded that the propaganda they had carried out had worked effectively. This means that the number of supporters of the mask has decreased a lot. Even though the mask will return for revenge, there won't be many people on his side. So there is no significant threat that the mask can pose to parliament. He Yao naturally disagreed. For him, as long as the mask is not under their control, then the mask can harbor dangers that they don't know about. 
In his heart he Yao was worried, even though he was currently serving as president of the federation and nothing could stand in his way to make the mask leave he had spent a lot of funds and resources to give to the members of parliament who were present at that time. He Yao again says that for everyone's benefit, they must be able to find the mask and make sure he is under control. In the end, He Yao chose to move on to the next topic. The next topic is about the monsters on the front lines. It seemed that the professional attacks on the secret realm had relaxed. The number of monsters appearing increased by 32% from the previous month and the increase was the highest since the founding of the Federation. He Yao was annoyed because since the mask left, it seemed like people had become useless. Even though it was still a month since the mask left, they couldn't survive. Everyone was shocked to see the increase in numbers. One suspects that the federal government has relied too much on the mask, so the federal government should not revoke its previous position. Of course, Hayu was angry because the man dared to question the federal decision. Of course, the man was afraid and said that he couldn't possibly dare. Hiao was angry again because some people seemed to doubt that the federation could run without the mask. There are many troops in each city, but with the current peace, Hiao is afraid that everyone will slowly lose the ability to fight. He Yao naturally didn't want those people to use funds from the Federation, but not contribute. He Yao finally gave orders for troops to be sent to vulnerable cities. One member objected. The city defense army was the last line of defense of most cities. They are used as protection against demonic manifestations in secret realms or disaster demons in cities. He didn't agree that He Yao was rushing to move the city defense troops to another city. Another member interrupted the other man's words. The man's words sounded true. But the fact was that he was worried about himself because he had been benefiting from the city defense forces. The man's family is known to have distributed equipment to a large number of guards. Of course, downsizing the city's defenses could cause it to suffer losses. Of course, the man accused did not accept it. He Yao immediately broke up the argument between the two. He had already made a unanimous decision regarding the city defense troops that would be assigned to fill the gaps in the other small cities. He felt that the decision was the right one because now there were no more attacks by demons or disaster-level monsters in Star City. Apart from that, he also asked Xiao Qiu to be immediately brought to the capital so that he could immediately be used as an example to other humans. Back at the Da City Defense Force building, an officer was escorting Yan Kian and Kian Liu back. The two of them were allowed to go home because the Kaijong Company incident was proven to have nothing to do with the two of them. If something happens, they will get back to you. If there is no change in plans, they will also be summoned to court to become witnesses. Kai and Liu further asked about the witness. The officer again explained that it was only natural that he would be a witness considering that charges against the criminal Xiao Q were now being drawn up and would soon be used to convict Xiao Q through the courts. Xiao Q's case was a big case that attracted the attention of the entire federation so both of them had to be in court. Kai and Liu wants to know why Xiao Q is considered evil. What Xiao Qiu did was punish the Kaijong company. The officer again explained that there were dozens of people dead at Xiao Qiu's hands. However, killing is a mistake. Kai and Liu who heard it cried. For her, the victim Xiao Qiu was also not a good and innocent citizen. Kaijong company people have also persecuted many people and destroyed many families. Meanwhile, the term evil is more appropriate to use for Kaijong companies than Xiao Qiu. Commander Zhang heard everything and immediately confirmed Kai and Liu's words. He agreed and said that the Kaijong company had indeed hurt many families and that they all deserved to die. But even so, it was the city defense's job to assess and judge them. Kai and Liu then asked why the city defense troops did not act. Commander Zhang explained that every light must have a darkness that cannot be faded by it. Kai and Liu confirmed whether that meant they had to survive in the dark. Commander Zhang explains that there will always be sacrifices in this world. Kai and Liu asks again if that means they can't get rid of the darkness forever. Commander Zhang again said that it would be an unjust rebellion. Kai and Liu became very angry because his opinion was wrong, then every existence in this world was also wrong. Yan Kai was surprised to see Kai and Liu's attitude. She had also experienced many injustices like Kai and Liu, but even she couldn't scream as loudly as her younger sister. Kai and Liu finally took his older sister home. Commander Zhang said it would be great if Kai and Liu could stand up. The officer naturally wanted to know what he meant. Commander Zhang then explains that anger is usually a sign of incompetence, but it can also be a source of strength and Kai and Liu has that. Commander Zhang judged that with Kai and Liu's current source of power, he was definitely at the top level. Commander Zhang felt jealous and wished that he too had such strong anger before. In his heart, the officer looked down on Kai and Liu. It was completely pointless for him to be angry because Kai and Liu would forever be in a wheelchair. Then being angry will be in vain. Arriving home, Yan Kayan took Kai and Liu to her room. She asked her younger sister to rest while she would clean the yard. 
She also said he would think of a solution regarding Zio Q. Yan Kayan, who was in her room, could only ponder. If only in this world there were areas where light could not illuminate, then she would be the light. If only there were places in this world where the sun could not reach, then the sun would not exist because it would be useless. At that moment, Kayan Liu slowly stood up and began to walk unsteadily. At that time, Yan Kayan remembered that her little sister's room was still a little messy. Yan Kayan was surprised to see her little sister able to stand up. But Kayan Liu quickly asked Yan Kayan to run. Kayan Liu turned into a monster. In the meeting room of the city defense building, everyone was noisy talking about He Yao's plan to send troops. They had been asked to withdraw a third of the city's defense force which would cause a lot of problems for the people. Another man asks him to stop complaining. At least they weren't sent away to the front lines because as far as he knew the front lines were even more chaotic. After hearing that order, one-fifth of the troop team even submitted their resignation two days ago. Meanwhile, another group of people are already thinking about quitting too. If they had to send people to the front lines, those people would choose to leave. Another man also commented that moving the location of the city was not a big problem. If the officers were ordered to go to the front line then they would run away immediately. The difference in danger on the front line and in the city was very different. Commander Zhang gathered his men. He wanted to discuss something. But before he had time to speak, Commander Zhang suddenly felt a strong aura of great obscenity. The officers who heard the name of great obscenity were naturally frightened. One immediately said that it was impossible because the mask had destroyed him. Another officer immediately agreed and even said that perhaps the commander's senses were wrong because Commander Zhang had only ever met a great obscenity once and that was only the body. Commander Zhang didn't listen. He immediately ran and requested immediate activation of the emergency military plan. He ordered the evacuation of everyone in Da City, and he will bear the consequences of his order. Crowds can be seen in the center of Da City. A large screen showed news regarding the siege that occurred at Kaijong Company three days ago by the city defense forces. Meanwhile, a man was looking at flowers blooming on the side of the road. He thought spring had arrived. He thinks the noticeably warmer spring is the reason the flowers grow so quickly. The flowers bloomed so quickly. The man was of course surprised to see the rapid change. Suddenly, a bee approached the blooming flower. This coincided with a fairly strong wind hitting the flower and blowing away the pollen. The pollen that hits the bee's body causes flowers to grow on the bee's body. A moment later the bee had turned into a small monster flying in the air. The man who was previously observing stood still. His younger brother, who had been waiting for the traffic light to change color, patted his brother on the shoulder when the light turned green. He intended to invite his older brother to cross. However, the man then turned his face around and his older brother had turned into a flower monster. The younger brother was of course shocked and shouted that there was a monster. However, a split second later, when he was hit by a flower petal from his older brother's monster, it turned into a bunch of flower petals which then flew into the air. These flower petals then easily attack other humans. More turn humans into flower monsters. During the commotion, a professional arrived. He carried a sword and ran towards the monsters to kill them. Everyone certainly feels relieved because they think that the professional can help them. He immediately gathered strength and then split the monster with his sword. The lump of flower petals easily caught fire, but apparently what the professional did failed. He became infected and his hands started to turn into monsters. Professionals who saw it from a distance the professional green hand previously suspected that it was a great obscenity monster. The city defense team began to approach, led by Commander Jiang. One of the troops was confused when he saw the chaos that was happening. When he realized that suddenly many monsters appeared there. He also expressed his frustration at the monitoring bureau which should have been able to prevent this from happening. The troops then told Commander Jiang that the great obscenity should not appear again. Plus this great obscenity is different. Normally humans who were affected by the great obscenity's radiation would rot to death in the blink of an eye, but this time they became humans. However, even though the radiation effect is different from before, great obscenity can still destroy and damage human civilization. Commander Jiang stopped and looked at the chaos in front of him. He gave the infected humans the name Flower Humans, but Commander Jiang reminded them that they should not be lulled by that appearance. It is not permissible to use common sense to look at monsters because they can turn into something beyond even imagination. Commander Zhang finally gave the order. He asked the city defense troops to be responsible for securing the roads and watching from a considerable distance while ensuring that the flower people did not continue to spread. Commander Zhang also asked everyone to be careful not to have physical contact with the flower people to avoid getting infected. Everyone then started to move. However, the commotion certainly did not subside. Some people ran scared seeing the flower man. Commander Zhang who saw it immediately ordered everyone to start attacking. He didn't want his troops to just watch stupidly while on the field. Commander Jiang began to show his strength by spitting out a fire dragon from his mouth which then burned the monsters. The humans thought they were safe. 
until suddenly the ashes of the burning flower man stuck to his face. Not long after, the city of Da was filled with vines. Director Arthur, who was also paying attention to the situation, could only see a green hell in front of him. Meanwhile, Commander Jiang gave instructions for the city defense troops to no longer use the power of fire to eradicate humans who had been infected and turned into flower monsters. Commander Jiang realized that flying flower human parts could cause infections in other humans, even if they were just small pieces. Not long after, Director Arthur found Commander Jiang and asked what was going on there. Commander Jiang said that they were hit by a disaster. Commander Jiang knew that Director Arthur had experienced great obscenity firsthand before. So Commander Jiang confirmed whether what they were facing was indeed a great obscenity. Director Arthur did not doubt that it was indeed a great obscenity, but he didn't know why she could come back. Commander Jiang answered that it was because of immortality. Commander Jiang goes on to explain that very few monsters are immortal. Even if they were reduced to ashes, that would only be the outer appearance. Commander Jiang made an analogy of the great obscenity to a marine biota called the lighthouse jellyfish. This type of jellyfish is known to be able to return to its juvenile form every time it reaches sexual maturity and so on. Jellyfish can live forever as long as they don't get sick or are eaten by other predators. Commander Jiang added that such immortal monsters had only been discovered a few years ago, so it's natural that the director of Arthur doesn't know about it because it's very rare to find. After all, eternity is relative. No eternity is truly forever. As long as the medium or host that the monster lives and can be eradicated, then even the strongest monster can die. Commander Jiang didn't realize before that great obscenity could not only cause disaster but also have the characteristics of immortality like this. This could happen because the radiation effects left by the previous great obscenity may have now become a medium for his resurrection. The type of radiation is different from the previous great obscenity which could only turn humans into pus and corrosion. The current great obscenity radiation can cause changes in the human body and make them become creatures that can transmit the infection to other humans. Everything just got weirder. Director Arthur cursed someone he called a damned bastard. Of course, Commander Jiang wanted to know who he meant. When the mask succeeded in eliminating the great obscenity, the mask told the officials handling the matter to deal with the radiation experienced by everyone effectively so that all traces left by the great obscenity could be erased in Da City. At that time the officials immediately agreed and even made a guarantee of military orders. However, after the mask left, the officials ignored the mask's words. Not only did they fail to clean up the mess left by the great obscenity, but they also embezzled the money that the mask had allocated to help the infected people. So the condition of contaminated victims gets worse. Director Arthur was of course very angry. If only the officials had followed the mask's orders. Commander Jiang interrupted the conversation. He asked Director Arthur to monitor the energy fluctuations of the secret realm and monsters to determine whether the infectious radiation from the Great Obscenity was spreading to other places as well. Apart from that, it is also to ensure the location of the strongest possible energy as well as the place where the Great Obscenity resides. Director Arthur wanted to know why Commander Jiang wanted to know. He thought that Director Jiang intended to take care of the big problem by himself. Director Arthur immediately banned it because it was too dangerous. He reminded him that the Great Obscenity was a level 10 disaster grade monster. Director Jiang certainly knew that. So far, there has never been a level 10 monster in Da City. Even a level 9 has never appeared. Plus, this Great Obscenity monster has found new life and mutated. Most likely, this Great Obscenity's strength has not yet reached its peak. Therefore, now was the right time to destroy it. Moreover, Great Obscenity does not have strong combat capabilities. She is only able to infect very well and that is why Great Obscenity is said to be a natural disaster monster. Commander Jiang had to destroy the Great Obscenity now or they would suffer even greater consequences later. Director Arthur knew there was nothing else that could prevent Commander Jiang's wishes. In the end, he could only ask Commander Jiang to be careful and not be infected by radiation from the Great Obscenity. Meanwhile, he will ask the people at the Monitoring Bureau to send the energy data map immediately. Meanwhile, in Star City, life goes on quietly, until the news broadcast news of the Council's decision to move some of the city's defense forces to the front lines to strengthen military strength and ensure the safety of citizens. Next is an emergency news broadcast by the news. The presenter reported on the appearance of a natural disaster level monster in the southeastern administrative region, specifically in Da City, 3rd province. He also said that until now the local city defense forces were still coordinating. Social media is also starting to get busy with news about the city of Da. Humans also started to comment a lot. All comments began to focus on the mask who should appear in such conditions. However, some other residents were reminded that the mask was no longer in charge of destroying monsters after he gave up his status. Some other people suspected that the mask was just hiding and pretending to give up. Meanwhile, on social media, several people share photos of the current situation in Da City. Everyone commented again. 
They didn't immediately believe the photos shared, so readers asked for videos or more evidence. The sender was on the run because the Da city government ordered an evacuation. She also explained the current situation that the city defense forces assisted by professionals have not even been able to overcome the disaster. She also explains how humans have turned into monsters too. They are infected with pollen or other flower parts. He added that the great obscenity that was destroyed last time has now been reborn. Finally, the sender said that currently, the commander of the city defense troops had intervened directly to kill the monster. News about Commander Jiang personally intervening was also reported on various television channels. The host added that the natural disaster monster in Da City was probably a level 7 monster. Meanwhile, Commander Jiang was also a level 7 professional and was the fastest to reach it 8 years ago. Commander Jiang is also known for his achievements as well as his participation in battles against level 8 monsters. The host added that they will start broadcasting live broadcasts from Da City. In the live broadcast, everyone could see that Commander Jiang was barging in on his own looking for a great obscenity. Seeing how Commander Jiang was moving quickly, the host said that he was a man worthy of being a level 7 professional and that even flower men and monsters couldn't catch up to Commander Jiang. Until the host saw Commander Jiang stop at a certain point, the host suspected that Commander Jiang had discovered something and his suspicion was correct. Commander Jiang saw a figure of great obscenity who was none other than Kian Liu. Commander Jiang recognized him immediately. He immediately said that Kian Liu should not pretend to be a god. Because no matter how he looks now and even though at first glance it looks amazing, no one will want to worship him. Commander Jiang had seen many people like Kian Liu. Some previous monsters deliberately imitated religious figures that existed on Earth so that many people would worship them. At first, such tricks could make everyone think that their presence was indeed a punishment from the gods to the world. Some people even end up becoming fanatics. They no longer resisted and instead volunteered to be killed under the magic influence of the monsters that looked like gods. However, when the humans realized that the monster was not a god, humans quickly abandoned their worship. From a distance, Director Arthur reminded that standing in front of Commander Jiang was a reincarnated great obscenity. He didn't want Commander Jiang to be fooled by his feminine appearance. She's just a monster who is humanity's greatest enemy. Of course, Commander Jiang knew it. But Commander Jiang still didn't believe it. Even though it had only been a few hours since they first met, Commander Jiang had no idea that Kian Liu had now turned into a monster. Kian Liu casually asked if Commander Jiang was sorry. Without hesitation, he expressed his regret. He should have killed Kian Liu while he was still sitting in a wheelchair before. Commander Jiang started to attack Kian Liu with his strength. Kian Liu, who didn't move, apparently lost part of his head because of the attack. The live news broadcast that was continuing to cover it was certainly amazing to see Commander Jiang's movements. They were heading towards Commander Jiang's power that could even make great obscenity monsters unable to move at all. However, on the other hand, Commander Jiang realized that his blow did not affect Kian Liu at all. Kian Liu easily healed himself and returned to normal. He said that Commander Jiang's actions were all in vain. Kian Liu quickly recovered himself as before. Commander Jiang was shocked and so was the television crew covering it. Even though previously, part of his face had disappeared, he wasn't dead either. Even though ordinary monsters would have died. Of course, Commander Jiang did not remain silent. He started attacking Kian Liu repeatedly with his punches. But once again nothing happened to Kian Liu. She underestimated the sunlight dispelling the darkness attack which was Commander Jiang's strength. Kian Liu started aiming for Commander Jiang, but the man quickly dodged. Commander Jiang immediately realized that there would be great danger, especially after realizing that Kian Liu was even faster than him. Kian Liu underestimated the power of Commander Jiang who said he wanted to eradicate darkness, but it turned out to have little power for him. For Kian Liu, Commander Jiang was just a joke. Kian Liu recalled the people who relied on Commander Jiang to drive away the darkness, but it seemed like those people would die first before Commander Jiang even did anything. The reporter who saw Kian Liu's movements was of course amazed and frightened. Kian Liu doesn't move fast at all, but she can use the plants around her to move easily from one plant to another. On the other hand, Director Arthur asked Commander Jiang to retreat because he would not be able to defeat him. As long as the Flower Man was not eradicated, then Kian Liu would not be able to be killed either. So even if Commander Jiang attacked it many times, the monster would not be able to be killed by himself. The only possible solution was to use large-scale weapons to wipe out the entire region. Commander Jiang immediately interrupted. Obviously, in that situation, he could no longer escape. It was then that Commander Jiang took off his cloak. Kian Liu who saw the movement praised it. She thought that Commander Jiang had given up because he knew that all his efforts would be useless. However, Kian Liu realized that Commander Jiang was trying to attack him with the trapped animal technique. Commander Jiang strengthened his resolve to fight to the death at that time. Commander Jiang was known to use all the elements at his disposal even though it was very dangerous and might kill him. 
The reporter said that Commander Jiang intended to commit suicide by using all his strength and ultimately causing a loud explosion. On the other hand, Director Arthur immediately denied it. What Commander Jiang did was not suicide, but an attempt at ultimate relief by burning life force to increase the level. Of course, Director Arthur reminded Commander Jiang not to act crazy. Kai and Liu also apparently realized that what Commander Jiang did was the ultimate release. By releasing the power, Commander Jiang's level 7 will become level 8. On the other hand, Commander Jiang is starting to feel the effects of the release of energy on his body. He could feel his body continuously being infected due to the great obscenity, but the lightning he produced also continued to kill the infection. Commander Jiang felt every bit of his skin being torn apart, but it seemed to be put back together. The cycle of pain continues and does not end. Reporters reporting from helicopters were still optimistic. He believes that the current Commander Jiang is too strong and can destroy the Great Obscenity Natural Disaster Monster. Commander Jiang began to attack Great Obscenity again. But Director Jiang knew Great Obscenity was not killed. He could feel the energy fluctuations that had not disappeared and instead, the peak was increasing. That means Great Obscenity is getting stronger. Director Arthur realized that the monster was not a Great Obscenity. Of course, everyone was curious about Director Arthur's intentions. He began discussing an ancient Greek legend before the Dark Ages about an Earth giant named Antaeus. It is said that Antaeus will never be defeated as long as she still stands on the Earth and continues to gain strength from the Earth. The great mutation obscenity they saw together was Antaeus. Meanwhile, the tens of thousands of people who were assimilated into the city of Da were the source of its strength. That means if you want to eliminate it, you have to eliminate all the people who have been infected. Great obscenity is only one, but it also has tens of thousands. The person at the monitoring bureau was still trying to think about Director Arthur's words about only one monster, but like 10,000. However, before he had finished his thoughts, the officer was again surprised by the increased energy activity. It has even reached the highest alert level in the secret realm. Director Arthur also saw that his status had risen to natural disaster level 9 and his strength was also growing too fast. Da City will be destroyed. On the other hand, Kai and Liu was still paying attention to the extraordinary Commander Jiang. He just discovered that professional humans could reach that level by setting themselves on fire. Kai and Liu had previously fantasized about becoming a strong person who could roam the world with a sword. Kai and Liu was curious why Commander Jiang didn't use that much power to dispel the darkness he previously spoke about. Why did Commander Jiang let so many innocent people drown and die in the dark? Kai and Liu continued to ask questions and his anger made more and more flower people run towards him. Kai and Liu got bigger and bigger with all the flower people joining together to lift his body. Even the flower people who initially continued to spread out were now all heading back towards Kai and Liu. The city defense troops who were standing guard around the city were already afraid that their defense would be destroyed. But it turns out the flower man left and they thought the flower man chose to retreat. The city defense officers thought everything was over, but it turns out a new monster appeared in the middle of the city. Kai and Liu and the tens of thousands of flower people united and became a huge monster. The monster eventually changed into Kai and Liu but with a fantastic size. On the other hand, Commander Jiang responded to Kai and Liu's question, that it wasn't his fault that he couldn't overcome the darkness of the world. Kai and Liu shouldn't have asked him because death and life were nothing new. On the contrary, it is very common in the world. Commander Jiang finally dealt the ultimate blow to Kai and Liu's palm and then split his hand open. Everyone once again cheered thinking that the monster was defeated. The reporter said how Commander Jiang managed to destroy the monster. Commander Jiang is considered to be able to prove that humans with all their courage can defeat monsters. Commander Jiang was considered to have achieved a great and spectacular victory at that time. Everyone who heard the news also cheered happily. They praised Commander Jiang. They even wanted to become a professional too after being motivated by Commander Jiang's actions. However, it turned out that Kai and Liu did not lose so easily. For Kai and Liu, because of what the previous commander said, that life and death are commonplace, Commander Jiang should have gone to hell with this world. Who would have thought that at that moment Kai and Liu's hand returned to normal as before and immediately grabbed Commander Jiang in his grasp. Kai and Liu ultimately killed Commander Jiang and crushed his body into flower petals very easily. Kai and Liu casually said that Commander Jiang was like an egg against a rock. In a sense, he did something completely in vain. Director Arthur could feel how Commander Jiang's energy disappeared. Everyone was naturally devastated and shocked by Commander Jiang's death. One mother even forbade her child to watch the incident. Although to the little girl, Commander Jiang was just turning into a beautiful flower petal. Other residents also became worried. Da City might soon be destroyed too. However, other residents suspect that there will be more help coming soon. They are looking for the mask who should appear at a time like this. However, another man said the mask might not appear after giving up his hero title and disappearing for one month. 
The woman sounds desperate because she doesn't know what they can do without the mask. Now everyone is asking for the presence of the federal government to resolve the tense situation in Da City. They are responsible for expelling the mask so they should also act. Meanwhile, at the city defense center prison, the evacuation order was heard. A voice said that there had been a natural disaster caused by a high-level monster in the city center. Therefore, all personnel are expected to carry out emergency evacuation. The city defense officers standing in front of Zio Q's room chatted with each other. They are still not sure whether the evacuation order is real or fake. They thought it was just combat training. Zio Q heard the commotion. In the council room, Yao was furious at a group of people he called trash. For him, the council members were only good at talking. But when it was their turn to sacrifice themselves, no one was willing to do it because everyone was afraid of death. It also took them 1.5 hours to gather everyone because the monster was so scary. Yao felt they couldn't wait too long. If you have to wait 1.5 hours then the city of Da will be raised to the ground. Yao cursed again, saying that they were all just a bunch of cowards who were greedy and afraid of death. For Yao, they had all forgotten about the nature of glory should owned by mankind. Even before, there were people who sacrificed for the sake of the peace of humanity today. A board member spoke up and he blamed He Yao for being cruel to the mask before. The other council members immediately gave their opinions regarding the ultimate way to fight the monsters. The man suggested using small-scale nuclear weapons to destroy the great obscenity monster. Nuclear will also not cause much radiation in the surrounding area afterward. Another man immediately agreed to the idea. Nuclear weapons may sacrifice a small number of people, but they can ultimately save the vast majority. They only needed to wait for Hiao's approval so they could immediately attack the region with nukes. Everyone kept urging Hiao to do it. They said that after everything was over, Hiao would receive praise from all the citizens for saving Da City. Hiao was starting to be affected. He wants everyone to praise him. But not long after, an officer said that there was a change in Da City with the appearance of something. Of course, Hiao wanted to know what it was. He thought it was the professionals they had sent. But that officer rejected it. That something was a humanoid creature or rather a monster. In the exclusive prison of the city defense force, an officer was surprised to see Zio Q's room. Another officer came and asked where their prisoner was. The officer haltingly answered that Zio Q had run away. Meanwhile, in the city center, the city defense troops were frightened after realizing that Commander Jiang was dead and that the flower monster might attack again. They all ran away from there because they didn't want to die. A small part of the troops kept them from leaving because they had no place to take shelter. Finally, the surviving officers worked up the courage to fight the returning flower men. The man ran towards the plant and he easily sank into the roots. Another officer certainly intended to help and wanted to fight together, but suddenly there was a movement that rushed in front of him and destroyed the roots. The officers immediately rescued the captain who had gone inside first. They were relieved because they could be saved. Meanwhile, reporters who were remaining in the helicopter were asked to withdraw by the tower because conditions were getting out of control. The pilot had asked to sit down so he could fly high, but reporters quickly asked the pilot to wait. He saw help coming. He thought it was help from the Federation Council. He was sure that the Federation would not let Da City lose and surrender easily. Some were annoyed because the aide arrived too late. However, if they had arrived sooner, Commander Jiang would not have died. The aide started killing them one by one. That help was Zio Q. He received his new assignment to eradicate Great Obscenity, a natural disaster level monster that reappears. Meanwhile, the reward from the mission is the essence of Great Obscenity. Zio Q looked at the Great Obscenity before him. This Great Obscenity was different from the ones he had encountered in the past. The past Great Obscenity symbolizes destruction. Meanwhile, the current Great Obscenity symbolizes life. Zio Q looked at the simulation of forest life in front of him where trees tropical can grow freely. The trees not only grow fiercely but also turn everything they touch into their territory. Regardless of the fact whether it was a mountain, sea, desert, or city, all of them could transform into the same life form and grow together. This forest life is expected to be devoid of sadness and pain. All life will be completely immersed in that state. If the previous great obscenity was a crime, this great obscenity is the ultimate crime. However, Zio Q didn't care about what was in front of him because his main goal was the great obscenity core that could be used to gain strength against monsters in the future. Zio Q must kill him. On the other hand, Zio Q feels the pain of living in that dirty world. Therefore he asked everyone to join in and submit to him little by little with heart. He promised to usher in a beautiful world without sadness, pain, and injustice. Kai and Liu felt like he was no longer his old self but she has joined the flowers. Life that is now assimilated can make all humans equal even though this was not the case before. Now there will only be joy left in their brains. Kai and Liu was sure that more people would join the sorrowless holy land. At that moment, Kai and Liu suddenly felt that a large group in the south had disappeared. Kai and Liu immediately called out to find out who had come. 
On the other hand, Xiao Qiu was surprised to see the figure of a great obscenity who turned out to be Kian Liu. Meanwhile, Kian Liu was also curious about why the new thing that had arrived was not assimilated into the trees. Kian Liu immediately knew that she was not human, but not even monsters would survive in her environment. Kian Liu tries to attack Xiao Qiu and asks to be let go. Fighting is inevitable. The flower man started attacking Xiao Qiu, but Xiao Qiu certainly didn't give in easily. With his sword, he moved to kill the flower people. The reporter who continued to report saw how the monster's movements were so fast and even the great obscenity monster seemed to be having difficulty. Even just looking at the fight, everyone's adrenaline was pumping and their heartbeats were also speeding up. Some of the professionals who saw the fight were certainly confused. There has never been a case of monsters fighting other monsters. He suspected that it was not a monster, but rather a human professional who looked like a monster. Xiao Qiu seemed to be able to dodge every move very well. That ability is not luck, but strength. The monster is seen breaking through the flower man by continuing forward and moving as fast as possible to avoid the edge of the explosion at the critical line which can help save time. Although of course what he does is full of risks, it can even cause death if you are not careful. Speed, agility, and insight are needed. The professional knew that the reason humans could fight monsters was because the two had differences in wisdom and skill. Meanwhile, the monster even had intelligence beyond the reach of a level 9 professional. The professional was convinced that the monster was human. It's just that the armor he wears is quite strange. But if it is true that it is a monster, then the idea of a monster that can surpass humans is truly terrifying. On the other hand, Xiao Qiu managed to get close to Kian Liu and was even around his shoulders. Xiao Qiu was already near Kian Liu's head with his wings and sword. Everyone was still watching the live broadcast of the fight. Some commented that Xiao Qiu should avoid such a dangerous position. However, others regretted Xiao Qiu, who was only now showing his flying abilities. Meanwhile, professionals praise how genius the monster is. Xiao Qiu's movements were completely unexpected. Obviously, the goal was to get close to the monster's head. Ordinary professionals would obviously not dare to use such fraudulent tricks without high self-confidence. Xiao Qiu started attacking Kian Liu's head with his weapon. Again, the reporter said that Xiao Qiu's monster managed to split the head of Kian Liu's monster. This right made Kian Liu lose control of the flower man moving on the ground. The reporter also reported that the movement of the flower people had stopped. Reporters checked to see if this means a win for them. The foreign monster just eliminated the great obscenity natural disaster monster. But apparently, Kian Liu was not completely dead. Kian Liu and all the flower people ask about Xiao Qiu's identity. Kian Liu was curious because the monster was holding a bloody crow sword. Xiao Qiu chose not to answer. Meanwhile, Kian Liu continued his conversation. Kian Liu realized that what was in front of him was Xiao Qiu who was also a monster. Therefore, she invited Xiao Qiu not to fight and instead cooperate. Kian Liu continued that if they united, they would have great power that other creatures did not have. Kian Liu wants them to change this rotten world together. At that moment, Kian Liu showed the essence of the great obscenity that he possessed. Xiao Qiu could see that the core could make anyone who possessed it also feel the powerful life force of the great obscenity. Xiao Qiu was of course shocked because great obscenity even gave him the mission reward directly. Obviously, that was a big temptation for me. Xiao Qiu didn't move, making Kian Liu ask if you really didn't want the great obscenity core to break through that dirty world. Once again Kian Liu asked him to join, so that they could run into the gaps between mountains and valleys and run towards rivers and seas. Even if there was another darkness in the world, they could destroy it together. Flower humans also call for the same thing, namely destroying the world together and creating a new world together. The reporter who heard for himself how tens of thousands of flower humans screamed at the same time really made his heart hurt, as if natural disasters would last forever. However, what was quite surprising was that the two monsters seemed to know each other. In his mind, of course, Xiao Qiu was not at all interested in Kian Liu's invitation. Kian Liu's plan to protect humanity, let alone cooperate with monsters, I have no interest at all. Even before being reborn, I was fed up with such things. After being reborn, the only thing he wanted to do was kill all the monsters. Even for that purpose, Xiao Qiu was willing to turn himself into a monster at the mercy of the system. The thing he needed was an even stronger power to fight all kinds of monsters. On the other hand, Kian Liu, who didn't get an answer, finally understood that Xiao Qiu just wanted to end the disaster. Kian Liu challenges Xiao Qiu. Whether Xiao Qiu will end it or Kian Liu will end that dirty world. Kian Liu started attacking with roots spreading from the head. She immediately caught Xiao Qiu in her grasp, but Xiao Qiu easily broke free. Without losing his mind, Kian Liu ate Xiao Qiu's monster. However, once again Xiao Qiu attacked and penetrated the back of Kian Liu's neck. Xiao Qiu had previously killed tens of thousands of such giant beasts in the past, 
but the problem now is that I haven't found Kai and Lion's real body. That's why I haven't been able to kill him. Zio Q thought hard about where the core body was. Because the core body is not in the brain, Zio Q suspects that the core body is in the heart. Not waiting long, Zio Q tore Kai and Liu's body across her chest. I kept searching and searching and even repeatedly penetrated the giant monster's chest. Finally, he saw a light in the middle of Kai and Liu's body. Zio Q was sure that this was where the core body was. Zio Q managed to find Kai and Liu's real body and immediately pierced his body with a sword. Kai and Liu didn't expect Zio Q to succeed in doing the impossible again, like an egg that managed to break a rock. But Zio Q was completely exhausted. His body fell. Meanwhile, Kai and Liu actually started approaching him. The girl didn't know what to do when she realized that Zio Q was more handsome than even the mask. Kai and Liu touched Zio Q's face. The girl asked Zio Q to calm down. She said that Zio Q had succeeded in killing me and I was only surviving with the remaining energy. On the other hand, the reporter doesn't yet know what happened. They thought that I lost and that meant Da City would be destroyed. But suddenly it started raining in the city of Da. While everyone was staring at the rain, they realized there was a nuclear bomb heading towards the monster. The reporter returns to report that there is a nuclear bomb heading towards the monster right now. He knew immediately that it was the Federation's decision to do so. He Yao apparently regretted his actions. Meanwhile, Kai and Liu was actually disappointed because these people were completely heartless. Using a nuclear bomb meant that not only Zio Q and I would die, but the entire city could become victims. Kai and Liu said that before I die, I must show everyone that the people in the Federation who have oppressed the mask are just rotten people. Kai and Liu re-entered his monster body and used the last of his strength, then gathered all the flower people. Meanwhile, a very large tree emerged from his hand and actually turned into a giant tree ready to receive the nuclear weapon. Everyone looked at him with uncertainty. Meanwhile, the explosion was inevitable. All the monsters were destroyed. Meanwhile, the city defense troops also managed to control the explosion within a safe radius. Director Arthur was certainly happy to see him. Commander Jiang's struggle was not in vain. However, one of the monitoring bureaus could see how the monster seemed to have deliberately hit itself with a nuclear bomb. Director Arthur immediately denied it and said that the woman had just seen it wrong. Employees of other monitoring bureaus confirmed whether this meant natural disasters were no longer present. On the other hand, people saw how the tree split open and the rest shattered into flower petals flying in the air. There were some people who praised her beauty and decided to touch the flower petals. A man had banned it because he was afraid that the girl would get infected and mutate. But apparently nothing happened. Meanwhile, Kai and Liu's real body was already in Zio Q's arms. Kai and Liu slowly opened her eyes and looked at the flying flower petals. She said to Zio Q that I never realized that spring was so beautiful. At that moment, Kai and Liu's body disappeared into flying flower petals. Zio Q completed his mission to defeat the Great Obscenity and also received the core as a reward, namely the heart of the Great Obscenity. Zio Q realized that it also meant Kai and Liu's heart. I immediately put it inside myself. At that moment Zio Q disappeared from there. Everyone cheered happily because the disaster monster in Da City was defeated. But when everyone was so happy and calling for the long life of mankind, something strange happened. The flower people all turned back into humans. Most of the live broadcast viewers were certainly shocked by what happened in front of them. So they realized that all the flower people who were attacked by the nuclear bomb were also humans. Some people think that if the bomb had not succeeded in killing the monster then so many people would have died in the rampage. If that happens then not only a small number of people will die but the entire city. Obviously, the small sacrifice would be a normal sacrifice. Of course, some people disagree. Just the presence of the monster Zio Q who managed to enter the heart of great obscenity and make all the flower humans stop moving was enough. For him, nuclear bombs are no longer needed. Residents also regretted that the mask was not there because if they had been there, the disaster would have been resolved from the start. Other residents immediately confirmed it because if the mask existed maybe they wouldn't even need a nuclear bomb and not even one person would be a victim. In an instant, all kinds of comments appeared. After that, live broadcasts on television or related discussions on the internet all disappeared without a trace. In the Federation meeting room in Star City, the council members were discussing controlling information regarding nuclear bombs which had been resolved easily. However, he felt that he now needed to explain the situation to everyone because many people had already seen what happened. If not, they will be in a difficult situation in the future. Moreover, they had previously been in contact with the mask, but people's emotions were still very high. In his mind, the council member suspected that the bomb had killed at least 1,000 people. However, this amount was still not enough to make Yao step down from his position. Another man spoke as the councilman had mentioned the mask. He felt that previously everyone in parliament had agreed and agreed to use nuclear bombs to exterminate natural disaster monsters. However, on this topic of extermination, the mask should also be responsible. 
The other board members naturally wanted to know how this could be connected to the mask. Moreover, they don't know where the mask was at that time and whether he was actually around the scene at that time. Another member answered that precisely because the mask was not present, all of this incident was his responsibility. If only the mask existed, they definitely wouldn't have to go that far. There doesn't even need to be any sacrifice in vain. The man added that the Federation and all of humanity had given the mask a lot of natural resources. However, the man just left without saying goodbye and simply forgot about their kindness. So according to logic, the natural disaster in the city was also his responsibility, because the mask didn't care about people's deaths so the tragedy ended like that. The council members insist on connecting and blaming the mask for everything that happens in the city. Everyone just fell silent at that time. Meanwhile, when everyone left, the board members asked He Yao not to worry. He promised to take care of everything down to the smallest detail. He Yao said that he was not worried at all. He was just thinking about the root of the problem of everything they were experiencing. He Yao concluded that this was because they did not have strong firepower. If only they had a little strength then it would be enough to face all problems. He Yao then asked about the continuation of the sun in the morning plan that had been implemented. The board members responded that because their 268th attempt was successful, the plan could progress quickly. He said that some bodies have not even been activated into a new human mode, but have been able to live stably for a long time. And even after the new human status is activated, the body quickly collapses, although there is not enough evidence yet. The fusion of humans and monsters is completely achievable. The board members added that if the mask is known as the one who pulled humanity out of its mire, then they will be the ones who push humanity to heights it has not reached before. He also added that if they could make all humans have monster powers instantly then everyone would become strong and they could become gods. The front line of the monster battle was originally an area with an area of about 1 million square kilometers of the entire vast land. According to records from the Dark Ages, before humanity became civilized, the area included most of Africa, part of South America, and all of Antarctica. Within 100 years the entire human race was almost extinct. That piece of land also experienced terrible movements and collisions. Tectonic movements that usually take millions of years were only completed in 100 years. Back before the mask took the lead, no trace of humans was found on the front lines. Monsters that emerged from the secret realm were everywhere. Monsters don't just live in the city but continue to attack humans in other areas as well. Countless people were killed at that time. Apart from being on the front lines, parts of Thailand also have another name that is even more feared and recognized, namely the birthplace of disaster. That's where all kinds of monsters start. Only after the mask appeared could humanity enter that realm. With great power like the wrath of the gods, he suppressed and twisted the land of the demons until it became the front line. Even though they didn't know whether they would survive at that time, they were able to develop rapidly to this day. Everything happened because of humans who were like gods. On the other hand, a secret realm opened and there were four men standing guard in front of it. They discussed who would explain what happened to Captain Jiang. Everyone was pointing at each other at that time. One man pointed to another man who should talk to Captain Jiang because he was the one who had known him the longest. The appointed man immediately refused. He argued that he couldn't speak well and was afraid of disappointing everyone. Not long after, the Captain Jung they were waiting for finally came out. On the other hand, the guards started to think. The secret realm in front of them had a boss in the form of a level 7 demon. Captain Jong Ling was of the same level, but surprisingly managed to clear it in 30 minutes. He was amazed by the strength of Captain Jing Ling and was not surprised that she was called a genius. But apparently, the faces of the four men were very tense and Captain Jong Ling noticed it. One of the guards started to say that they had news that needed to be conveyed to Captain Jong Ling. Of course, I want to hear it. So the troop continued his speech regarding the appearance of natural disaster level monsters in Da City. Captain Jong Ling asked if the monster had been resolved. The guard continued that the monsters had indeed been overcome, but Captain Jong Ling's father or Commander Jiang had sacrificed himself in the battle. I also added that Commander Jiang's sacrifice was extraordinary and great as the commander of the city defense army. The man asked Captain Jong Ling to read the news on social media if Captain Jong Ling didn't believe it. However, Captain Jong Ling just walked away and chose to go to the next secret realm. The four men were naturally surprised by Captain Jong Ling's response. They weren't sure Jong Ling was really okay. However, another man said that Jong Ling was someone who had the ability to control lightning, but nickname was Immovable Ice. Another man added that water would not be able to move the ice. Captain Jong Ling had probably lost all his emotions. Jong Ling overheard the conversation, so I said that if the two people behind him had free time, I would send them to the peace camp. They immediately apologized and promised not to say anything like that again. Meanwhile, the secret realm at the forefront was forming very quickly. However, Jiang Ling's team was able to work quickly too so that the number of secret realms that continued to be formed could be controlled. The stronger the team, the more secret realms there are to deal with. 
As soon as Jiang Ling wanted to enter a secret realm, I was detained by one of his troops who asked if Captain Jiang Ling needed everyone to help in the secret realm this time. Another team member also said that they had not entered the secret realm together for a long time even though they were supposed to be a guide group. Captain Jing Ling, who heard their words, suspected that all the men were looking down. The man immediately dodged it. I don't mean to belittle you at all. Captain Jiang Ling entered the secret realm. Meanwhile, the men breathed a sigh of relief. Captain Jiang Ling was very scary to them. Its aura was even like that of a high-level monster. However, for them, Captain Jiang Ling is indeed very strong because he's faced this kind of reality at a very young age. When it comes to monsters, Captain Jiang Ling is also like an emotionless monster who doesn't know pain. Captain Jiang Ling who was in the secret realm slowly entered and found a group of dead monsters. Captain Jiang Ling suspected that another team had entered the secret realm first. Well, that's all for this Manhua discussion. If this video gets 5000 likes then we will make the next part. Thank you and see you again.